a fly by the left field deep. Way back, way back. This ball is gone. A walk-off home run. Newport Gulls win it here in the 11th. This is the Newport Gulls pregame show, live from Cardinals Field in Newport, Rhode Island. Swing and a miss, strike three. It's all over. The Newport Gulls are the 2008 Southern Division champions. Coming up, interviews, stats, standings, lineups, and a whole lot more. Swinging a high drive to deep right. Oh, is this ball crushed? Way back and gone. Joey Manning with a towering shot. Swinging a high drive to deep left. And you can forget about it. Cal Conley with his third home run of the game. Stay tuned. The Newport Gulls pregame show starts now on the NECBL Broadcast Network. In his sixth season covering Newport Gulls baseball, here is play-by-play -play broadcaster Nick Lima. Good evening and welcome to Cardines Field here in Newport, Rhode Island, where tonight the Newport Gulls will take on the Holyoke Blue Sox as interdivision play continues here at Cardines. The Newport Gulls coming off a road trip in which they defeated the Vermont Mountaineers for the first time since the 2006 season. The Gulls taking a, uh, a shop victory up in Vermont three nights ago, an off day on Monday. Last night, the Newport Gulls traveled to the Keene Swamp Bats and, and continued in division play, dropping a game in Keene. The Newport Gulls, winners of four of their last five, return home here tonight under cloudy and actually rainy skies here at Cardinals Field, but we're still getting set for baseball as interdivisional inter play continues next here on the NECB Broadcast Network. I'm again, I'm Nick Lima. Coming up, the Newport Gulls pregame show. Stay tuned for a whole lot more still to come in the Gulls Eye Views next here on the NECB Broadcast Network. And welcome back here at Cardinals Field as our Newport Gulls pregame show continues. Nick Lehman now joined by Newport Gulls uh, guest for our today's Gulls Eye View segment, the Holyoke Blue Sox broadcaster, Dan Sturdivant. Welcome back to Cardinals Field, Dan. Uh, it's a pleasure to be back here. It's uh, first trip, only, only one we get this year, unless we should meet you guys uh, way down the road. Dan, you've been to this ballpark a few times before, not just as a member of the Holyoke Blue Sox organization, but as a member of uh, the then Pittsfield Dukes, a team that has changed drastically in the offseason. Yeah, you know, they're off to another pretty good start. They got off a little bit slow, but you see them creeping back towards 500, and it's nice to see uh, Dan Duquette's ball club being as competitive as they have been. How have the Holyoke Blue Sox fared so far this season in the NECBL West? Well, it's uh, it's been a little bit up and down right now, riding a three-game win streak. had some fine pitching performances. Uh, Eric Polvani named Pitcher of the Week after a three-hit shutout and a walk-off win. Uh, that coming last weekend, went back-to-back -back nights with walk-off wins. Uh, first, Rob Lawler, the walk-off hit to score Jim Wood. Then the following night, uh, Wood comes in as Michael Bellatrans hit by a pitch. So, you know, in a season like this where it's such a sprint, so much about pitching, you need some breaks to go your way. And uh, early on, at least, looks like the Blue Sox have got a couple of good ones. Uh, you began your career in the press box for Pittsfield before getting promoted to the broadcast booth. Yes, I did. I uh, started out doing the public address there, and also this season, uh, we have uh, a buddy of mine, Alex Birch, who also does some of the broadcasting, so I get to do some PA as well for some of the Holyoke games. Uh, you know, I love broadcasting. It's also a lot of fun uh, just kind of get to goof around on the microphone uh, in the park for ball games. Of course, you had the opportunity to uh, serve as the NECBL All-Star Broadcaster for the Northern Division last season. How was that honor? Uh, that was fun. It's a long day, uh, but it was a great time down there at Fusenich Park, and, uh, and this year I look to be involved uh, Either way, uh, you know, because it'll be at Holyoke, so I, I will most likely be doing public address for the event. And uh, it's always fun, and it's always going to be interesting. Home run derby at McKenzie Stadium. We'll have to see how that's going to pan out. Uh, you mentioned, Dan, the 2009 All-Star Game, of course, this year at Holyoke. Uh, what sort of special events or festivities are in the works? Uh, there's a lot going on. Our GM, Barry Wadsworth, I know there's uh, dinner in the week leading up to it. And the day of, of course, uh, all the different skills competitions are scheduled and, and everything else is still in the works. Uh, he'd have a better beat on that than I would, but we are we're really excited to have it in Holyoke this year. Dan Servant, uh, Holyoke Blue Sox broadcaster, thanks for joining us here in the Goals Eye View. We'll see you up later in the pregame show. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate it. That's our Goals Eye View. The Newport Goals pregame show continues with Mike Coombs next here on the NACBL Broadcast Network. Stay tuned. And welcome back here at Cardinals Field as our Newport Gulls pregame show continues. Nick Lehman now joined by the Newport Gulls manager, Mike Coombs. Skip, how you doing today? Doing good. How are you doing, Nick? You looking good tonight. He's got a suit on tonight that doesn't have any wrinkles. Pull it right out of the, the dry cleaners. But tomorrow night will be a different story. Yes, it will be. I couldn't even get to the dry cleaners. The Newport Gulls have been on the road as of late. A trip to Vermont, a long trip on uh, 
uh, Sunday did pay off as the Newport Gulls took their first victory in Montpelier in the uh, better part of two years. Really? That last victory was in 2006. That was a good win. We played very well there. Uh, we had good offense in the pitching. Wallow threw the ball very well. Offense slowed down, unfortunately, last night and couldn't keep up with the power hitting of the Keene Swamp Bats who tapped the Newport Gulls pitching for five home runs. Okay, I don't know if that's power hitting. I mean, yes, we did play on the same field, and yes, we had the same opportunities, but I don't know so much about power hitting. I mean, you know, there's one of their home runs was legit, I think. It's a short porch. Live by the short porch, die by the short porch. So, and I'm not going to take anything away from them, but a couple of those balls, even the one that uh, we hit was a little, you know, questionable in any uh, ballpark other than the Keene Swamp Bats. But, um, yeah, they, they hit the ball better than we did. I give them credit for that, and their guy pitched very well. Yeah, one of those home runs actually just bouncing off the fence at about the 350-foot marker, not exactly a ball that was crushed. But it uh, was enough to count the runs, though, as the goals fell to the Keene Swamp Bat 7-3. to uh, Tonight, the Newport Goals returned home and continue in interdivision play. The goals have been fearing okay so far, going 2-1 uh, thus far in interdivision action against... Uh, uh, the Vermont Mountaineers, of course, with a win a couple nights ago. Uh, have a lot of rain outs as of late. It rained out uh, last week in Pittsfield. A lot of makeup still to come here and a long stretch of baseball coming up for Newport. We'll play home today and on the road tomorrow against the Holyoke Blue Sox. A two-game home and away season, uh, season series will be wrapped up very quickly here. Right. Um, we do have uh, quite a few games coming up in early July. Uh, we got three double headers, and then we play July 12th, a single game in Pittsfield, and July 17th, a single game in Manchester. So uh, we got about five rainout games to get, but we got three of those that are going to be double headers, and hopefully we'll get tonight's game in. There's a mist in here, so I don't know what the deal is with that. But hey, it's this has been the uh, Florida weather right here. The weather looks like it's finally going to turn around starting tomorrow as the Newport Gulls travel to Holyoke to play this team again for a second consecutive night. It's something you don't see much here in the NECBL, playing the uh, same team two nights in a row, either home and away or even two games at home. Uh, does that make anything different in how you go after them here tonight? No, we'll just uh, make sure that Colby uh, Hawk, he'll, he'll chart them tonight and make sure he knows what to do with them. They have a big ballpark over there. So, you know, it's uh, just go after them. That's all, that's all you can do. Andrew Kittredge gets a start tonight for the Newport Gulls, making his debut here at home. Uh, what can you tell us about him? Um, Andrew's fastball, curveball, slider, changeup kind of guy. Um, I'm hearing he's got pretty good command, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. I have only seen him throw a, a pen, haven't seen him throw in a game, so this will be his debut. Lineup hasn't exactly stabilized yet, though Greg Garcia has been consistently in the leadoff spot. Uh, new cleanup hitter tonight and Derek Jones. Yeah, um, we're going to put Jonesy in that spot. It's almost looked like anybody that we've put in there, it's been the black hole, and nobody's really uh, produced out of there yet. So we're going to throw Jonesy in there. Let's see if he can fight through it. Uh, offensively, the Newport Gulls have still struggled a little bit here, not in the best categories across the league as far as uh, home runs, doubles, and uh, batting average. But uh, do you see that turning around with the power that these players do have? You know, you look at it, Nick, and I'd much rather be doing what we're doing as far as the pitching goes right now because – Hitting always catches up with pitching later on in the summer. The arms get a little tired. Uh, these kids are coming in here now using wood bats. The pitchers don't change anything. They're using the same baseballs and same mounds, basically, and their same work routine and everything. So, But the wood bat is a big change and a big difference for these young kids. And so uh, when they come in, they, they're ray fresh off of aluminum. Now they're using a wood bat, and so they've got to start producing with a wood bat. And... Sometimes that's all the difference in the world. Some kids can handle it. Some take more of a, uh, an adjustment period and, um, you know, just go from there. Lastly, we go around and look at the injury report uh, right now, Coach. Uh, anyone hurting right now? Mike Malilla, we saw him take a, a couple swings uh, pinch hitting last night in Keene. No, Mike, Mike's fine. He's ready to go. We had a little talk yesterday about his comeback, and uh, he wanted to – he thought he would – needed to catch yesterday but I wanted to give him one more day because I didn't want anything to start happening like what we had last year with Jet Butler and in a game out two games in a game out four games and so I just want I want to make sure everything's good to go because when those pitchers start pounding the strike zone I want to make sure that uh, you know that his hands okay you know I mean Ian's a good catcher too so you know there's no no problem there but um, Mikey Mikey's uh, excellent catcher excellent receiver calls a great game 
as well does Ian. Uh, Mike swings the bat pretty good, so does Ian. So, you know, it's a, it's a good good deal having both those guys here. Newport Coles manager Mike Coombs, thanks for joining us in pregame show. Catch up with you again on Friday. Thanks, Nick, and hang that jacket up tonight. Will do. That's our pregame visit with Newport Coles manager Mike Coombs, who joined us before every game here on the NECBL Broadcast Network at home. The Newport Coles pregame con continues with Newport Coles baseball next. It's the Newport Coles and the Holyoke Blue Sox, and it's next here on the NECBL Broadcast Network. Once again, here's Nick Lima and the Newport Gulls broadcast team. And welcome back here at Cardines Field in Newport, Rhode Island as we get set for baseball. My name is Nick Lima. I'm joined tonight by Dan Sturnovit and Alex Bursch here on the NECBL Broadcast Network. Good evening, gentlemen. Thank you, Nick. Thanks for having us. And looking forward to a good evening of baseball here tonight between the, these two teams, the Newport Gulls of the NECBL Eastern Division, the Holyoke Blue Sox and the NECBL West. We continue interdivisional play here tonight at Cardines Field, a ballpark that has been very kind to the Newport Gulls this season. Newport 4-1 here in the safe confines of Cardines or under very cloudy, overcast skies. A threat of rain is upon us. Light mist in the air right now as the starting lineups for both ball clubs are announced down on the field. Tonight, Newport Goals send Andrew Kidridge to the hill, making his Newport, Gay, Newport Gold debut. Who's starting tonight for the Blue Sox, Dan? The lineup drawn up by Coach Moorhart looks like this. Stefan Arcure gets the nod after his three-game hit streak was snapped last night. He's in right field. Jim Wood, the all-star from last season, is in left. Sean Rocky, the second baseman, bats third. Mike Nemeth bats cleanup and plays first. Jake Rosenbeck. Once again in the five hole and playing third, Rob Lawler, big shot, Rob is DH, Cooper Blank follows in center, Zach Wright does the catching and the slick fielding, Michael Beltran, the Utah Ute is at short. A lot going on here at the field right now, a special uh, bike, bicycle giveaway here tonight as uh, Newport goes, get ready to host the Holyoke Blue Sox for the first and only time of the season here at Cardinals Field. Don't go away folks, we'll have the starting lineups once again for you in just a few minutes, but first we'll come back with the out of town scores and action around the league, and that's next here on the NECBL Broadcast Network. Back here now at Cardinals Field, a roundup of action around the league. Last night, the Mount Mountaineers defeated the whole All-Americans in interdivision action, 9-2. The Pittsfield uh, American Defenders defeated the North Shore Navigators, shutting them out 3 to nothing. That's helped kept the Newport Goals a half came out of first place in the NCBL East. Let's take it down to the field first before we continue with the roundup with our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight oh the rare parts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Now the national anthem sung here tonight by Rick Drones, the director of quality at uh, KVH Industries, who are sponsoring tonight's uh, game here at Cardinals Field. Continuing with action around the league uh, in the NECBL last night, the Newport Gulls did drop their first game in the last, in the last five as uh, Newport fell to the uh, Keen Swamp Bats. A final score of seven to three, Keen Swamp Bats with five home runs off of Newport Gulls pitching last night at a small ballpark in Keene. Denver Westerners over the Sanford Mainers in interdivision action, six to five. And Holyoke over Manchester, 11 to five, Dan. And the Blue Sox pounded out 15 hits. Got a couple of nice outings from Taylor Wood who got the start. Picked up his first win of the year going the first five. He struggled 
in the fifth inning where he gave up four runs, but none of them were earned. He gave up five in the game, only one earned total. And then Jonathan Stevens, the big righty on his way back from Tommy John surgery, seems like he's just about all the way back. I talked to him before the ball game last night. He went four innings, gave up one hit, no runs, no walks, and struck out five. He threw about 60 pitches. He says another couple of uh, long appearances out of the bullpen. And he should be almost ready to be in the starting rotation for the Blue Sox. So the Blue Sox coming out of a strong win last night. The only other game in the league last night was rained out. It was the North Ham Cats scheduled to play at New Bedford. So right now in the ACBL East, it's North Shore on top, 9-5. and five, Half a game ahead of the Newport Goals at 7-4. and four. San Fernando's at one game back, 8-6. and six. Lowell All-Americans at 3-5, three, three games back, followed by New Bedford and Manchester in the division. In the ACBL West, it's Keene on top, 9-5. and five. Holyoke Blue Sox have 7-5, and five, one game back. North Island Steeple Cats and Vermont Mountaineers both a game and a half back, followed by Dan Gray Pittsfield. Stein lineups next in the ACBL Broadcast Network. And back here quickly at Cardiff Field, as for some reason we're getting started eight minutes earlier as the players have already taken the field, so very quickly we'll have to go over the starting lineups once again. First for the visiting uh, Holyoke Blue Sox, once again here's Dan Sturdivant. Leading off for Holyoke is Stefan Arcure, the right fielder. Jim Wood follows in left. Sean Rocky is the second baseman. Mike Nemeth bats cleanup in place first. Jake Rosenbeck is at third. Big shot Rob. Rob Lawrence, the designated hitter. Cooper Blank, the center fielder. Zach Wright does the catching, and Michael Beltran Bats ninth and plays short. For well, the Newport Gulls, Greg Garcia starts and starts at second base tonight. Mike Miller will bat second, he's the catcher. Third baseman, Jerry Bergman bats third. Clean up is Devin Jones, the left fielder. Aaron Westlake bats fifth, starting in the DH tonight. First baseman, Troy Scott bats sixth. Mike Kaminsky is the right fielder, batting seventh. In center field, it's Joey Manning batting eighth. And around the, uh, the order for the Newport Gulls, David Petra at the shortstop. Newport Gulls will be facing. Doug Jennings tonight, 2.82 ERA, 2-1 two on the season thus far for the Blue Sox. Andrew Kittredge gets the start for Newport, 4.27 ERA, 4-5 four in 29 appearances, making seven starts for the University of Washington. Tonight it will be his Newport goal debut. We'll tell you more about him in just a few moments. First Ladies game time, temperature one, conditions. It's 62 degrees. The south-southwest wind at 3 miles per hour should not affect play at all here tonight. A uh, light mist and rain is in the area, though we should be clear for baseball. Uh, just uh, more of an annoyance and a nuisance than anything under overcast skies here at Cardane's Field. Again, about 62 degrees. Degrees. Umpires for tonight's game. Vincent Zabelli calls balls and strikes behind the plate. And Richard Anatoniak is the field umpire. First pitch is next here on the NECBL Broadcast Network. Welcome back here at Cardine's Field as we get set for baseball. Andrew Kittredge throws his last couple of warm up tosses. Good evening again. I'm Nick Lima, joined by Dan Studevant and Alan Spurs joins us a little later as well here on the NACBL Broadcast Network. A three man booth tonight as we get set for baseball between the Newport Coles and the Holyoke Blue Sox in interdivision action. Leading off for the Holyoke Blue Sox, Stephen Ockford. What can you tell us about Stephen, Dan? Stephen, uh, guy who's really been swinging a hot bat, as I mentioned, had the four game hit streak snapped last night. He's got the average drawn up to 387. He has good gap power. He's driven in four runs, has a couple of doubles in his 12 hits. Good speed at the top of this order for the Blue Sox. A right-hander, Andrew Kittredge, winds, kicks, and deals. His first pitch of the ball game is a fastball up and away for ball one. Kittredge of the University of Washington. Freshman season for the Huskies this past spring. Had a 4.27 ERA as his 1-0 pitch is on the outside corner. Called strikes its home plate umpire, Vincent Sabelli. Again, Richard Antitoniak is the field umpire. 1-1 the count on Arcure. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss strike two to Steph Stefan. Kidridge, four and five record for the Huskies in 29 appearances, seven starts. We also recorded three saves in relief. Struck 71 and two thirds innings. Well, one two pitch comes inside as he jackknifes out of the way and the count's even on at two and two. Jim Wood to follow here. Kidridge, native of Spokane, Washington. Wines, kicks, rocks, and fires. Curveball. Strike three called on the outside corner. So first time we've seen Gidridge's off-speed pitch. And it's in there for a strike. First strike out of the game, and there's one down. Yeah, and like right there, Vincent Sabelli not punishing uh, the righty Kittredge the since the ball popped out of the middle of Mike Melillo. Still stays true to the call as that one Wood. snuck in the back door and really froze Stephen Ark here. So Ark here goes down on a 2-2 pitch. Now Jim Wood, who also bats on the left side. Takes the first pitch, fast ball, swings it, grounds it to the third baseman. On one high hop, Jones stabs it, throws it across the diamond. Rather, Bergman stabs it, drives across the diamond for the inning's second out. One pitch, now two outs here. As Kittredge retires Jim Wood, 5-3. to three. 
Woods been more aggressive this season than he was uh, last year that for Holy Oak, going after a lot of first pitches. He's had some good luck with it, but they are just Sean getting on top of that Rocky ball as he hit it the other way. Here's Sean Rocky, second baseman for Holy Oak. Rocky stands in, faces Kittredge, who winds, kicks, and deals. Fastball, inside corner, a called strike. Defensive alignment for the Newport Gulls. Troy Scott at first base, Greg Garcia at second, David Ben tried at shortstop, Joey Bergman at third, outfield left to right, Jones, Manning, Kaminsky. The pitch is swung on, foul to the right. Now he's in a hole, nothing in two. Mike Melillo catches Andrew Kittredge. And Sean Rocky's at the plate, number three man in the lineup. He's in the down on the count now, 0 and 2. Just in the way here at Cardines. As the pitch. It's a curveball, swung on it, missed strike three. Side goes in order, two strikeouts in the inning for Andrew Kittredge here in his Gulls debut with through half an inning at Cardings Field. Holyo, Blue Sox, nothing. Gulls coming up here on the NECBL Broadcast Network. Well, if you're just tuning in here at Cardines Field as we get our own way with the last half of the first inning, we're already well underway. This game started for some reason about seven minutes early as they rush through the pregame facilities. There are showers in the forecast for later on tonight, so maybe they're trying to get every minute they can out of this ball game. As they got underway as soon as they were ready to go, it's now 6.35, now of course the scheduled start time. Here at Cardines Field, as the Newport Gullers get their first look of the season at Doug Jennings. Jennings a hard throwing right hander from UConn. Stands at 6-3 and 202 is from Pompton Plains, New Jersey. Is 2-1 on the young goal with a 2-8-2 ERA. Three appearances, all three starts. Has a complete game. Has a 3-2 win over the North Adam Steeple Cats back on June 11th. Last time out, only went seven innings in the loss to the North Shore Navigators. But I thought that might have been his guttiest performance. He knew he didn't have his best stuff. Still able to eat up eight innings on the hill for Coach Moorhart's staff. Save the bullpen in that one, even though Holyoke would eventually lose that one. And that was the last time the Blue Sox lost as they've won three straight games since. Garcia and Melillo Bergman do up for the goals here in the first. No score in this one as of yet, as Newport will be batting for the first time against Jennings. We'll take 10 seconds for station identification here on the NECBL Broadcast Network. NCTV 18, Newport County, the World Wide Web, and on DVD. This is Newport Gulls Baseball on the NECBL Broadcast Bergman Network. Garcia is from the University of Hawaii. Here at Cardines Field, Greg Garcia gets set to lead things off for the Newport Gulls offensively. Newport off a loss last night in Keene, 7-3. As the Swamp Bats tapped goals pitching for five home runs at Alumni Field. Garcia stands in, starting in second base tonight for Newport. First pitch from Jennings, and therefore strike. It's nothing in one. Garcia comes in batting 235. He's yet to drive in a run, has a double. Leads the goals with six runs scored. The pitch, low it away. The count's even at one and one. Garcia for the University of Hawaii this spring, at a 265, two homers and 23 runs driven in. Working slowly is Jennings. From the belt, he fires a 1-1 one -one pitch. But inside, ball two. Takes a moment, steps off as Garcia taps on the plate under a very Overcast and unpleasant conditions here tonight at Cardines Field. The, the rain has held off. 2-1, uh, fastball hit on the ground towards the third base side. The shortstop back hands it deep in the hole, throws across the diamond in time for the out. Good play by Beltran, who had to take a couple of steps back into his right next to the outfield grass and backhand stab that slow roller. Was able to get Garcia by a step. A lot of times in a ball like that, if it gets by the third baseman coming across, on times you can just pretty much chalk it up as a hit. Good job by Beltran there. Doesn't have the strongest arms, but a very quick release. Able to get to that ball on the back end and fire an accurate ball across to Nemeth. Now this lefty heavy goals lineup. We'll see Mike Melillo batting from the left side here. Comes in at 160, a homer two RBI. Takes the first pitch high for ball one. Melillo, pair of doubles in the season, leads Newport with seven walks and a 382 on base percentage. This is his first start off the injury he sustained here at Cardines on Friday night. 1 0 pitch. Fastball, a little bit low. The count's even at 1 and 1. Melillo, who jammed his finger catching a bullpen side session prior to the game here on Friday. Feared it may be broken, it could be out for an extended period of time, but x rays revealed no, no fracture. Just a jam in his finger. Now he's ready to play. The 1-1 pitch, a curve is fouled off to the left side and out of play. So Melillo did get a pitch hit appearance. Went 0-1 last night in Keene in his return from the temporary disabled list. 
Happy to be back in the starting lineup here, giving Ian Tompkins, the other goals catcher, a night off. His first night off of the season. He had started all 11 of the goals previous games. So 1-1 one -one pitch. It's a breaking ball in the outside corner, a strike. Counts even at 2-2 two two to the goal catcher. Mike Melillo in his second season here for Newport. Awaits the 2-2 two -two pitch. Comes in high and tight for ball three. Melillo at Elon University this spring, batted 344, led the team, our third on the team, with 18 homers and 59 runs batted in, 19 doubles and three triples. He awaits the payoff pitch. Swung on, fouled off the top of the press box roof. Camera will remain full. Jerry Bergman to follow, set the defensive alignment for the Blue Sox, Dan. And first base is Mike Nemeth. Sean Rocky plays second. Michael Beltran is short. Jake Rosenbeck at third. The outfield from left to right is Jim Wood, Cooper Blank, and Stephen Ark here. And Zach Wright, the ECU Pirate, is the battery mate for Doug Jennings tonight. Once again, Jennings from the windup. The 3-2 pitch. Curveball, strike three, called on the outside corner. Melillo knew it. He heads back to the dugout. A beautiful curveball that time from Jennings. Yeah, similar to how we saw Stefan Arcure go down against Kittredge in the top half of the, the inning. Breaking ball, outer part of the plate, four, and both batters Joey buckled and knew it. Bergman. Also from the left Jason side of the plate, here's Charleston. Jerry Bergman. A Bergman, the goal third baseman tonight. Florida. Comes in leading the, leading the goals in batting average at 316. No homers in RBI, one double. The pitch. Fast balls outside for ball one. Bergman making his sixth start here for the goals and joining the team late. He was drafted, adopted to continue his collegiate career out of the College of Charleston, where he batted an amazing 452, 15 homers, 57 runs batted in. 1 0 pitches fouled off. It's 1 and 1. 25 doubles and a triple at the College of Charleston this spring for the gold third baseman. He was drafted in the 22nd round about a week and a half ago by the St. Louis Cardinals. 1-1 one, one pitch. Curve is a little bit inside. Missing for ball two. Derek Jones waits on deck. Bases are empty. No score. We're here in the first inning. Just underway. And it's a 2-1 pitch coming from Jennings. Swing and a foul tip to the backstop. Bergman. A very defensive swing when golfing that time. Good breaking ball there from Jennings. Bit at that back leg, and it was a late hack from Bergman. Jennings brings fastball, curveball, and a change. The fastball in the mid to high 80s has topped out in the low 90s previously, but the out pitch is the curveball. Jennings once again. The 2 2 pitch. Curveball just missed outside. Very close to that time. Didn't get the call from home plate umpire Vincent Zabelli. Crowd still filtering in here. Most of the fans are shaded underneath the right field. Uh, grandstand where the roof seats are and also behind here in the press box where we're undercover as the pitch is a weak hit ground ball broken bat to the second baseman Rocky has it throws the first in time for the out that retires the side a perfect inning for the in the first here for Doug Jennings we're through one full at Cardinals Field no score between the goals and the, the Blue Sox here on the NECBL broadcast network Go to the top of the second inning here at Cardinals Field. It'll be four, five, and six due up for the Blue Sox inning. of Holyoke. Sox. Mike Nemeth, the Jake Rosenbeck, and Rob Lawler due up here. A couple of NECBO veterans Neiman in the middle of the lineup in Rosenbeck and Lawler. A resident of Washington, Nemeth New Jersey. Steps up here, batting from the left side, takes the first pitch inside for ball one. And 256, 109 RBI, double and a triple on the season. Pitch, swinging a line drive in the left center field. That's going to hook in for a base hit. Picking up on the run is Derek Jones. And on with a leadoff single is Mike Nemeth. And he has, will be the first base runner of the ball game for either team. Nemeth has some good pop in that bat. He likes to extend his hands. And that's where he's at his best when he's hitting the ball the other way with some authority. As you saw there, that ball got out in the left field quickly. That's something he worked on last week a lot. He was in a little bit of a slump. And he asked his coaches uh, during BP to start pitching him away more to work on hitting that ball, and right there, looked like that practice paid off. So one on, no one out. And 
Jake Rosenbeck stands on the left side of the plate here. Pitch, slow ball one. Rosenbeck making his return to Cardines Field. Of course, he played here for the Pittsfield Dukes last season, making four trips to the city by the sea. 1-0 pitch, swung on, foul, tipped around the plate area. Counts even at one and one. There's Rosenbeck, had a costly error at shortstop in the 10th inning of the regular season finale last year, July 31st, 2008, that allowed the Newport Gulls to narrowly defeat the then Pittsfield Dukes for first place in the NECBL Southern Division and have home field advantage. So world away now though. He's with a bolt in a blue sock uniform. As a 1-1 pitch is in the dirt. Skips away, taking it off for a second and taking it without a throw is Mike Nemeth. There'll be a pass ball charged to Mike Melillo. His second of the season. And back to Rosenbeck. He had a fine year for the Dukes last year. Hit 329, 26 RBIs. And 10 of those came with two outs. Just a little taste of the, the clutch hitting that we've become accustomed to to see from Rosenbeck. He's driven in nine so far this year. Now a runner in scoring position with no one out. The 2-1 pitch. Ground ball up the middle, off of the pitcher's ankle. It's going to roll all the way off to the right side. Being stopped at third is Nemeth. As the ball is finally stopped at the edge of the infield grass. Well, took a weird carom off of uh, maybe even the, the footwear of Andrew Kittredge. It looked like it got him on one of his legs. It'll be an infield hit for hitter, Jake Rosenbeck. And hitting 422 Waller. on the early going. So you don't have that kind of average. Now some luck. Is that ball, if it's fielded and up the middle, Rochester, likely a play for the shortstop Bentrot heading to his left, but instead, as you folks can see on the replay, kicks off the leg, and there you go, the Blue Sox with runners on the corners for big shot Rob. La La uh, excuse me, Rob Lawler played for the Cocky Quarry Dogs in 2007. His first pitch for low ball one, of course the Blue Sox were based in Concord as the Quarry Dogs through the 2007 season. Then moved to Holyoke last year to replace the then Holyoke Giants who became the North Shore Navigators moving to Lynn, Massachusetts. Rob has gotten the nickname because it was back on the 19th about five days ago. Had a walk-off hit and the 1-0 win against Sanford. Then the next night had a two-out, two-run single that Turn a 5-1 lead to 5-3. One all pitch is fouled with a screen. The count will even on a bowler who comes in batting 156. No homers, four runs batted in, and a double. It's amazing that only five hits so far this season that two of them have come in such big spots for the Blue Sox, both keying victories. Runners leave the corners. The pitch skips in the dirt, stopped by Melulo. Mike Nemeth, who singled at third. Rosenbeck reached on an infield single. Bounced off the catcher's Kittredge's foot stands in at first base. From the stretch, Andrew. The pitch, outside. Corner, a called strike. A little bit of a late strike call that time from Vincent Zavelli. Catches all of us off guard. And he counts even at two and two. The runners take a lead. Sandfield stays squared away. 2-2 uh, pitch, curveball, just missed low and away, and the count's worked full. Cooper Blank to follow here. Kittredge. Steps off and looks to third, looks to first. He has six siblings, five older sisters and an older brother. He's the youngest of seven in his family. Her ball grounded on the ground to the shortstop. He flips to second for an out, on to first. Double play, crossing the plate from third base is Mike Nemeth. So they get two outs, but the Holyoke Blue Sox take a one nothing lead. No RBI for Lawler. And Rommel, he did the very least he could do. At least he got that run in any way you can. Number nine. Put the ball Cooper in play, at least he didn't one. go down on strike. So that does From get that University, first run across. Utah. An important one here for the Blue Sox. 6-4-3 double play City. erases Rosenbeck. And Lawler will bring up Cooper Blank with the bases empty. Takes the first pitch, curveball up and away for ball one. So it's Nemeth who scored from third. As the lights now come on here at Cardines. That mist has dissipated what somewhat. Next pitch is inside. Did he go? No, he didn't, says 
Richard Antoniak. He checked the swing up high. Two balls, no strikes to count on Cooper. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Tried to check the swing again, but went around. Comes in batting an even 200. No one was three RBI, a pair of doubles. And it feels like Cooper's really starting to put things together. Had a couple of hits in last night's ball game. A single and a double. Also had a sack fly and a walk. He scored a pair of runs. 2-1 pitch, a ground ball foul up the first base side, trickling towards the Holyoke dugout. Of course, Holyoke Blue Sox fans who are new to the NECBL may not know that Cardinals Field is a very unique ballpark, to say the least. Side-by-side -side hockey style dugouts here at Cardinals. Also very small dugouts. You can only fit about 10 players in them. 2-2 pitch, inside and high, ball three. Very odd dimensions here. The outfield fences, even the areas that they do look straight, are in fact jut in and out about 10 to 20 feet up and down the lines. And there are some spaces where there's just a triangle in center field, a, a big box in right field as the 3-2 pitch is followed back. Shakes up our backstop carrying position. Also shared bullpens down the left field line and hardly any foul territory whatsoever here at the ballpark. The third base coach's box is about five feet in front of the wall. Payoff pitch, curveball, strike three, called on the inside corner. A pair of singles for the Blue Sox here in the second yield a run. And after an inning and a half, it's the Blue Sox one, goals nothing here on the NECBL Broadcast Network. Well, not a very sunny afternoon here at Cardinals Field as we go to the home half of the second inning. Newport goals and Holyoke Blue Sox in the first of two meetings this season. Holyoke a one nothing lead here in the last of the second. These two teams will meet for the second and final time of the regular season tomorrow. Of course, the Newport goals All-Stars will make the trip to Holyoke for the 2009 NECBL All-Star game in July. Hey, Derek Jones, Aaron Westlake, Troy Scott. We three do up here in the second inning. Perfect first for Doug Jennings who do side on a pair of ground downs and struck out Mike Malillo. Derek Jones making his home debut here. Did come in as a pinch hitter and stayed on to play the outfield last night. And Keene went 0 for 1. Jones for the Washington State Cougars batted 223 but led the team with 12 home Leading runs. Also had 37 day. runs batted in. The left Eight Fielder, doubles and a triple 19, this spring. Derek He'll bat Jones, from the left side, so another lefty here University. for the goals. They didn't have enough already. Washington. Native of Snohomish, Washington, attended Snohomish High School. Pinwheels the bat, looks out on Jennings. First pitch to him. Curveball swung on, skied into shallow left field, giving Chase the third baseman Rosenbeck will watch it trail out of play into the stands and actually beyond the grandstand onto America's Cup Avenue. Even with the odd dimensions here, there's no doubt that Cardians is a hitter's park because of that lack of foul territory. Playing the spacious confines of a place like McKenzie or Northwest Park in Manchester, uh, or even at Keene where there is some good foul ground, a ball like that needs to be an out instead. It's just strike one to Jones. The 0-1 from Doug Jennings. High. Counts even at one and one. Jennings out of UConn. We're 22 to third innings for them this spring. Went two and one. Oh, check that. <laughs> Reading the wrong stats again, folks. The pitch. Ground ball hit to the shortstop. Up with it, Beltran. Throws across the diamond to first. Gets him by an, a step. And there's one away. 6 3 in the ground out for the Blue Sox this season. That has worked 22 and third innings. 2 and 1 record, 2.82 in run average, three appearances, all of them starts, has a complete game. Native of Pompton Plains, New Jersey, 6 foot 3, 202 pound right hander. Opponents hitting 221 against Jennings. He's yet to give up a home run, allowed just three doubles and a triple as far as extra base hits go. Six walks to now 28 strikeouts in the season. He takes a pitch inside, ball one to Aaron Westlake. Westlake made his return. To Keene last night, the former Swamp Bat. 
Went one for four with an RBI single on his return to Alumni Field. 1-0 pitch, fouled to the screen. It's one and one. Westlake, who can play first base, he can play catcher, he can play in the outfield as well. And has done all three of those with the exception, actually, of catcher so far this season for Newport, though. Seemed like that might have been a possibility with Melillo hurt. But he's now back. It's Westlake in the DH role tonight. Give Ian Tompkins a night off. Tim Smalling, day of rest today too, as the pitch is swung on and lace in the center field, charging on Blake, he's still coming in. He'll make a basket catch. He had to run straight out from the onset. He was able to run it down, all oh, about 20 feet behind the second base bag. It had to come a long way in from deep center. Westlake got that one down off the end of the bat. It sounded Number good when he made contact, but Blank got a good jump in center field. He's got a lot of work out there with Alex Hilliard, currently tending to an ankle injury. Uh, Alex sprained it during batting practice one day. Also got spiked uh, just look, going after fly balls during BP. Here's Troy Scott. First pitch to him is in the outside corner called strike. Scott, third on the team in RBIs with four, batting 188 with one home run. The all one pitches, swung one and missed with strike two. It's interesting, Scott stands at 6'5 and 205, a long, lanky guy. Kind of has a lot of moving parts before the swing, then coils it all up and unleashes it. Very hunched over batting stance. The 0 2 pitches outside, ball one. Scott out of the University of Washington. But the Huskies batted 251, 11 homers, 31 RBI this spring. Also bats from the left side. One and two the count, the pitch. Curveball is drowned up the third base side. Backhand stab behind the bag from Rosenbeck. Throws across in time for the other retires the side. A good play by Rosenbeck and Doug Jennings. As we have two perfect innings here at Cardings Field, we are through two. Oyo Blue Sox one, Newport goals nothing as we continue on the NECBL Broadcast Network. Andrew Kidridge, his first pitch of the third inning is fouled off to Zach Wright. Wright, the catcher. Comes in at 217, no homers, a pair of runs batted in, two doubles and a triple. And that triple last night, coming off the bench for the Blue Sox. 0-1 pitch is low ball one. He had an insurance run in the top of the eighth inning in Northwest Park. He drove in Stefan R. Cure. From the wind up, the 1-1 one -one is a curveball on the inside corner called strike. So Kittredge's curveball has been on here tonight so far. Reduced three strikeouts thus far. The run in the second inning was earned. It's a 1-2 pitch. High, ball two. Newport goals that only allowed 14 earned runs all season as a staff coming into last night's game in Keene before giving up six to the Swamp Bats, or rather seven to the Swamp Bats. All coming on home runs. Pitch, ground ball, hits softly to third baseman on three hops. Bergman is up with it. Throws across the first, and he is just in time to retire right. And right now it's your normal slow-footed catcher. He runs very well out of the righty's batter's box. Sets him a half step behind, but nice play by Bergman to the gun him down. Time. But back to Newport Number pitching four. still, even with the seven Michael runs last night, a 1-9-7 team ERA. Even after that, still leads the NECBL. It was amazing to seeing the stats that they led the league in home runs, and then I finally led the stat line for last night's game. Beltran fouls the first pitch off. Strike one. Michael, shortstop for the Holyoke Blue Sox. Comes in batting 269. Driven in three runs. Had a big night last night. He went three for four, scored a pair of runs, and drove one in. <coughs> Curveball. Doesn't curve quite enough as it comes in over his head. Melillo has to come out of the crouch to reel it in for a ball one. Count leaving up. Well, the crowd, despite the dismal weather, has been filtering in steadily here. We may have over a thousand now. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swing, and a strike two. Newport go, a real one. Flies onto the field and quickly leaves after witnessing the string of the swing of Beltran. And he's still hovering out there above America's Cup Avenue, waiting for some stray, stray french fries or popcorn, I imagine. Pitch, swung on and missed for strike three. Number four for Andrew Kidridge. Well, 
Been doing well here in the strikeout department. Two strikeouts in the first, one to end the second. And now, right quickly, two up and two down Number here eight. in the third. We second Seven. around to the top of the order Arcure. for the second time tonight. We'll see Stephen Ancure, who was fanned looking on a 2-2 pitch in the first inning. In Kittredge. First pitch in the dirt, ball one. And Kittredge shows he is pretty good with the strikeouts. He caged 64 in 71 and two-thirds innings this past season. 64 strikeouts to just 17 walks at Washington. This pitch is on the outside part of the outside corner. Four strike, one and one on Acure. The pitch, curve, ball one, uh, ball two, a little bit high I suppose at that time. Benton Sabelli's been a little bit inconsistent here. It's a two one pitch, it's a curve ball up and away. Hitters count now for Acure. First time that Kidridge has fallen behind a batter tonight. Three balls and a strike. Outfield. Plays Steven a little bit deep here. Infield straight away. Here's the 3-1 delivery. Fastball foul tip off the catcher's equipment. It counts full at 3-2. and Akir comes in batting 387. It's good for third, or rather second, on the, the Blue Sox among active players behind Jake Rosenbeck, who's still batting 422 pitch. Swing and a foul tip to the backstop. He just does stay alive as the crowd was looking for a strikeout here at Cardines. That's about the loudest I've heard them so far. Been a quiet crowd so far this season in Newport, mostly because the kids have stayed away. Most of the games occurring on school nights with the exception of a Friday night game here last week. The pitch. Ground ball hit to the right side, charging the second baseman. Garcia gloves, throws the first in time for the other retires her side. It's the second one, two, three inning for Andrew Kitteridge. We're through two and a half innings of baseball at Cardings Field. Blue Sox won, goes nothing here on the NECBL Broadcast Network. <laughs> Last of the third inning, one nothing Blue Sox lead the Newport goals. It will be the bottom of the order do it for the first time in the ball game to face Doug Jennings and Mike Kaminsky, Joey Manning, and David Benchard. A reminder, but this copyrighted telecast is the exclusive property of the Newport Gulls and the New England Collegiate Baseball League presented by the authority of the NECBL Broadcast Network for the entertainment of our listening and viewing audience. And the accounts and descriptions of this game cannot be disseminated without the express written consent of the Newport Gulls, the Tigers TV crew, and the Commissioner's Office of the NECBL. Kaminsky, Newport, right fielder for Newport. Right fielder. Number nine. He's batting 094, Mike no one was an RBI. He's from Virginia Tech at Ventura. Yet to have an extra California. base hit this season. He'll be batting from the right side. Jennings has had a perfect two innings this far, looking for more here. Some fog starts to roll in in the outfield. The pitch swung on and driven to deep center. Actually coming in now, it's going to drop in for a base hit. Blank plays it on a hop, and Mike Kaminsky. Breaks up the perfect first two innings for Jennings with a leadoff single here in the third. Got an elevated fastball there from Jennings, able to hit it back where it came from. Good piece of hitting. The so the fielder, string of lefties is finally broken, and the string of Joey perfect Manning. innings is also broken from there for Vanderbilt Jennings. University Joey Manning, second time Newport goal, Florida. bats here at 200, one homer, two RBI, and someone coming here at Cardinals Field. One double out of Vanderbilt University. First pitch is inside, ball one. Wow, oh, I haven't heard that chant before. The Joey chant for Joey Manning. Well, the fans inventing some new chants here. I'm sure the Irish fans had a part in creating that one. Fan favorite Joey Manning. So pitch instead goes to first base. Kaminsky dives in safely. Michael, four, or Mike, four for six in stolen bases. At Virginia Tech, one for one for the goals this season. From the stretch, Jennings, the pitch. Curve is swung on and missed. Strike one. Wright thought about throwing down the first, but Kaminsky quickly back on the back. And that would appear to be the book on Mr. Manning, a big guy standing in at 6'5 and 235. He can mash the fastball, but a good breaking ball usually catch him off guard. From the stretch, here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. Fastball is low, pops away from the catcher, taking it off for second is Kaminsky, and he'll get there diving in without a throw. It'll be a pass ball charge to Zach Wright. That's Wright's fourth. So 
So Newport has the first runner in scoring position here. There's Kaminsky taking advantage of the pass ball. Joey Manning at the plate and has an opportunity to tie the ball game. Hitting room in left center field if he can pull one. Manning batted 200, a pair of homers and an RBI in the regular season for Newport last year. Stands in, takes a curveball inside. A hit is count, three balls and a strike now. To the goal center fielder who can play all three outfield posi positions and has done so in his goal career. And typically either in right field or in tonight in center with Kaminsky in the lineup. 3-1 pitch. Comes inside, ball four. Well, Manning earns a walk here, puts runners at first and second for David Bentrot. The short stop. Bentrot, number one. Batting an even David 100. He's two Bentrott for 20 on the season. From the University of Washington. Yet to drive in a run, looking for his first extra base hit. For the University of Washington, Valley, batted 224, Washington. five homers, and nine runs batted in. Bentrot also bats from the right side, whereas number one. Goals in their white home uniforms here tonight. So pitch comes inside. Throw down the second. They have Mike Kaminsky caught a run down. The shortstop throws to the third baseman. Back to the shortstop, Beltran. And the actually third baseman. Keep it in. He'll be safe at second. But instead, actually, they'll have him advancing to second, rather, was uh, Joey Manning, as they will have Mike Kaminsky. So Joey Manning heads up base running. Took off for second base and got there safely. And Mike Kaminsky, though caught in the pickle, was uh, allowed allowed the Newport goals to at least get something out of that disaster. Yeah, good heads up play there by Manning. Just go down, stand on second base, concede the out, and Kaminsky is picked off 2-6-5. Good job by the Blue Sox, only having one throw in the rundown there. They say the fewer the throws, the better. A bench right remains to the plate. Now the runner at second, the pitch. Inside corner for a strike. It's one and one. Well, the goals would rather have first and second with no one out. But still an opportunity to tie the ball game. The runner at second base and one down. Ben Schrott stands in and awaits the 1-1 pitch coming from Doug Jennings. And therefore strike, it's one and two. Top of the order to up next with Greg Garcia to follow. Garcia, like Ben Schrott, looking for his first RBI of the season. And a goals offense that overall has struggled much of the season thus far. Still making the adjustment to the wooden bats. Pitch. Curve, swing, and a miss, and the catcher right couldn't hang on. Foul ball for Benchart. Just does stay alive. Home plate umpire Vincent Zabelli dusts off the plate. As Jennings waits the pitch to David. Tying run in scoring position for Newport at second base in the form of Joey Manning. Benchart from the stretch. One two pitch. Curveball, swung on a miss, strike three. Benchrat goes down by way of the K. It's the second strikeout for Jennings and a big second out here in the third for the Blue Sox. Very big after a single and a second walk. Baseman. It looked like Benchrat was gonna be Number up to five, sacrifice a couple Frank runners over. Garcia. The big pickoff play for Kaminsky. And then Benchrat can't put it in play to advance Manning any further. Now it's gonna take a two out hit from the top of the order. Greg Garcia bounced the short to lead off the goals offensive section of the ball game in the first inning. Swings the first pitch, hits a line drive, base hit in the left field. Jerry Manning is being waved home. Here comes the relay from the plate, too late. Manning scores standing, and the Newport Gulls have tied it at one here in the third. It's an RBI double for Greg Garcia. Garcia's second double, his first run driven in, and we're not in at one here in the third inning. A good heads up base right there by Garcia, taking second base on the throw there with the RBI knock to tie this ball game. The, the throw from Jim Wood Number was 10, high and off target. Mike Wood not a very strong Malolo. arm in left field. More of an offensive minded left fielder. You see the throw offline pulling Zach Wright towards the middle of the infield. More of a flare than a bullet to left field off the bat of Garcia. Now Mike Melillo takes the first pitch inside ball one to the Gulls. Come back to tight in third. We're not at one. Melillo has an opportunity to give Newport its first lead of the ball game. Garcia. Some speed, leads off at second. Jennings a check on the runner. Now pitches to the plate. Like an off-speed pitch in there for a strike. One and one on the goal catcher. Strikeout victim is last time. Two outs here. One run in for Newport, looking for more. A pitch, 
from Jennings. Curveball inside. Two balls in a strike on Melillo. As a homer, two RBI. That home run coming here at Cardines Field to deep right. About a week and a half ago. Michael coming off the injury. Sustained on Friday. Pitch. Swing and a line drive to right center field. That's going to be caught on the run by Blank. Coming in to his left. He had to come a long way in and made the catch on a screaming liner by Mike Miller before the out that retires to side. However, the Newport Gulls tie the score in the RBI double by Greg Garcia. We are through three innings of baseball already here at Cardines Field. Moving right along here on the NACBL Broadcast Network. We're not at one. Back in a few moments. Back here now at Cardines Field, we're not at one, we go to the fourth inning. It's a scoring correction, Greg Garcia's RBI, I have called it a double. It was actually an RBI single, he advanced the second on the throw. So it is his, uh, his first RBI of the season was tied at one, and here to take you with the play-by-play -play for the next three innings, the voice of the Holyoke Blue Sox. Welcome back to Cardines Field, Dan Sturdivant. Oh, Thank you very much, one. Nick, and Andrew Kentridge enjoying his first appearance here. As he did give up a run in that in. second inning, but came out firing. He's retired five straight as he set the Blue Sox down in order. One, two, three in the third. He'll be dealing with the heart of the Blue Sox order. Jim Wood, Sean Rocky, Bobby and Brown Mike Nemeth with Jake Rosenbeck to follow should anybody game. reach. Nemeth got things started for the Blue Sox in the second. Lined the single to left center field. Moved up to second on a pass ball to third on Rosenbeck's infield hit and scored on Rob Lawler's 6-4-3 double play ball. They put the first run on the board. The goals answer back with a knock with two outs from Greg Garcia. That plates Joey Manning to knot this ball game at one. Both teams with a run on two hits and no errors. Each pitcher with 43 pitches through three frames. The first pitch to Jim Wood is fouled back to the screen. Wood grounded out to the third baseman, Joey Bergman, his first time up. There's a one pitch out for out number two of the first inning, an inning where Kittredge sat the Blue Sox down in order. The 0-1 is grounded towards the right side. Another chance for Garcia, who fields the charity hop and fires to first. A quick ground ball out number one. Sean Rocky was a strikeout victim. Went down swinging to end that first inning. Only took three pitches from Kittredge to do so. The second baseman. Number 12, Sean Rocky. Rocky. one of five right-handed batters in the Blue Sox lineup. First pitch to him is in the dirt, stopped nicely by Melillo, and it's 1-0. Rocky is quietly hitting five of the last six games for the Blue Sox. Blue Sox team that leads the NECBL in hitting at 271, also best on base percentage as a squad at 368. Taking on the best pitching team in the league. This one's lined out towards right center. Manning giving chase. He won't get there. It falls in for a hit. A wide turn from Rocky. He'll pull up with a single at first. And a one-out base runner for the Blue Sox. Mike Nemeth will stroll to the dish now, who had a similar knock from the opposite side of the plate. In his first at bats, he lined one over the head of the shortstop, David Bentron. Ball and that was cut off by Manning in the left center gap as Rocky tries to get something started with one here in the opposite gap. He's held on by Scott at first. First pitch to Nemeth in at the knees for a strike. A good pitcher's pitch there. It's 0-1. Oh, Alex Burch joins us from the NACBL Broadcast Network as well. Alex, this is your first visit to Cardines Field. What are your impressions of this ballpark as we pause for the pitch? Well, I gotta say it's a very cozy feeling right now. It's very misty here as uh, Nemeth's gonna take a strike on the lower inside corner. But I gotta say, it is a uh, friendly confines for hitters, that's for sure, like you mentioned. Small uh, small foul territory, but it's great to be here. County's 0-2 on Nemeth, the left hand hitting first baseman. Kittredge brings the 0-2, breaking ball is pulled foul off the first baseline. Fielded by a Blue Sox member who is not displaying the jersey is Coach Chad Levesque unable to make the trip today. Along with Coach J.C. Fernandez, both listening at home, we're sure. So Coach Dan Brooks is down at third, and Coach Moorhart remains in the dugout. 
While the Blue Sox hit. Nemeth battling, he's down 0-2 with a pitch. Is cut on and missed, an awkward three-quarter swing. The breaking ball, Nemeth had some words for Vincent Zabelli. He didn't like those first two strike calls from Zabelli. And he swings awkwardly at strike three. He strike out victim number five the for the righty Kittredge. Number 26. Jake. Jake Rosenbeck, the Blue Rosenbeck. Sox leading hitter, will stroll to the plate now. And that infield hit that set up the game's first run. That's here with Rocky on first and two down. First pitch, fastball on the outside, black strike one. Holyoke coming in at seven and five, a game back of the Keene Swamp Bats, the NECVL West. The 0 1 is ripped up the first baseline. That is just foul. Oh, Newport Gold flies overhead. Cardine's one of the few ballparks in the NECBO with a mascot, the real mascot. They'll make occasional appearances in the field. You don't see too many moose crossing the outfield in the Sanford or, or big reds in Holyoke. <laughs> Not too many of those. You see a lot of blue socks, though. You do you see, see some a blue lot socks. of blue socks. Not a lot of woodchucks in Vermont either in the infield. Count 0-2 to Rosenbeck. The pitch is grounded towards the left side. Chance for Berkman will go the short way to second. For out number three, the Blue Sox send four to the plate. They leave a runner on one hit. It's one to one. We head to the bottom of the fourth. And you're listening to the NECBL Broadcast Network. Welcome back to Cardine's Field. Dan Sturdivant alongside Nick Lima and Alex Burke chiming in occasionally here. We've been underway for slightly less than an hour here as we head to the bottom of the fourth. Locked in a good one between Doug Jennings and Andrew Kittredge. We've each allowed one run thus far. Jennings has been the de facto ace for the Blue Sox in his three appearances, two wins and one loss, including the complete game victory against the North Adam Steeple Cash back on the 11th. He struck out 10 in that game, gave up two runs on three hits. And then the 13-3 went on opening night back on June 4th, struck out 12 in just six and a third. Had a string of 11 straight outs that were recorded as strikeouts in that ball game. He's dealing here with Joey Bergman, the Newport third baseman, who drills one out towards left center field. Blank heading over towards the wall. He looks up. It's over his head and off the base of the wall. Coasting the second is Bergman with a leadoff double. And the Gauls put the go-ahead run in scoring position here on the fourth. Jerry Bergman picks up his second double of the season. Some ballparks, that's a home run here. It's about halfway up that 30-foot wall in straightaway left center field. Derek, He struck it solidly. Blank knew he wasn't going to have a chance to make the grab. Played it well. Played it back into the cutoff man, Beltran. We saw Greg Garcia with a clutch two-out RBI hit to deliver Manning last inning. All the goals will be able to score a run without the benefit of the hit if Jones can move him over to third here with nobody out. First pitch from Jennings is lined out towards center. Blank coming in, then will drop in in front of him for a base hit. They're going to hold the runner at third. The throw comes all the way through, but it was strong enough to at least hold Jones at first base, and the goals with a rally brewing here in the fourth. Set him home, Virgil Act, who's known for being uh, very uh, liberal in sending runners around. Third, wisely held up there. John Virgil Act, veteran Newport Gulls, third base coach, Aaron. assistant coach. Wesley. Kept Bergman at third base, and Newport Gulls have a great opportunity here with runners at the corners and nobody out. That's how the Blue Sox scored their first run. The same situation back in the second inning. They traded two outs for a run. They'd love Westlake to do the same here with runners at the corners. Bergman at third, Jones at first. Jennings working from the stretch to Westlake. The first pitch to him. A breaking ball in there for a strike, breaking the mojo. A first pitch fastball is getting lined out towards center. The one to Bergman off the base of the wall for a double. And Jones sent one right back where it came from. Count own one to Westlake, who flew out to the center fielder blank his first time up. Jennings pauses. The 0-1 is low for a ball, and it's one and one. Westlake hitting right at the Mendoza line. 204 hits in 20 at bats. No extra base hits in four runs driven in. Had a monster year at Vanderbilt at 377 to lead the team. 10 homers and 57 driven in. 
Big left-handed batter. The pitch is lined but fouled the third baseline and out of play. Advantage Jennings as the count climbs to one and two. Well, no score updates yet from around the league. As Vermont's at North Shore tonight, Manchester at North Adams and away at seven. Holyoke, of course, here at Newport. Uh, New Bedford at Keene. Pittsfield at Sanford rained out. Pittsfield rained out yet again. Count a ball and two strikes to the DH Westlink. Jennings brings the one two. It is low for a ball. Two and two. Westlake started the hands but clearly did not swing. No appeal necessary. So the go ahead run is 90 feet away. Blue Sox infield that double play depth. Nemeth holds runner on at first. Rosenbeck even with the bag at third. The 2-2 two -two is in the dirt, picked on the backhand by Zach Wright. And the count loads full at three and two. Let's see how aggressive Coach Coombs is gonna be. See if Jones will be breaking from first base here with a full count and nobody out. That was about an inch and a half from changing this inning very much. Zach Wright making a nice backhanded stop, keeping the runner at first base. Jennings to the high set once again. Runner does not go as he will step to third and look to first. Pickoff play then. It's good for success maybe once a season. Not the case there. As Jennings now has a brief conversation looking over his shoulder to Michael Beltran. There's a delay as Vincent Zabelli strolls out from behind home plate. So Jennings paying attention to the runner Jones at first with the step to third and throw to first. He actually held on to the baseball there. The payoff pitch. Once again, runner goes. The pitch is grounded foul up the first baseline and out of play. Newport goals with all the momentum in this ball game. They scored a run in last inning and then were able to work around a one out hit as Andrew Kittredge, after giving up that hit to Sean Rocky, was able to strike out Mike Nemeth and get Jake Rosenbeck to ground out to third to end that brief threat for Holio. The goal's threatening to break this one apart here with runners at the corners, nobody out. Slugger Aaron Westlake at the dish, stands at 6'4 and 230 from Redding, California. Good utility guy, can play either the corner infield positions or catch. He's the DH tonight, chance to change this game. Payoff pitch is low for ball four. Second walk of the game for Doug Jennings. He has averaged two a game here. So the base is full of goals and Troy Scott, the lanky first baseman, scores to the dish. Now this is exactly what Newport wants here. As the heart of the order does the work of getting on base. Now number six, seven, and eight, the real power in this lineup this season with Troy Scott, Mike Kaminsky, and Joey Manning having a real opportunity here to give the goals their first lead. Doug Jennings will work from the stretch with the runners full. This one is driven down the right field line, but foul. That ball hit a mile by Troy Scott. Just a little bit quick. He got a high fastball, and boy, did he turn it around. Well, home run really distance, flat. but just foul for Scott. He missed a grand slam by maybe 100 feet. Scott comes in. He's 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position so far this year. The season average at 188. Homer and four driven in. Three ducks on the pond. The 0 1 pitch is just outside for a ball. It's 1 and 1. Scott grounded out to. Blue Sox third baseman Jake Rosenbeck to end the second. It's a nice play by Rosenbeck behind the third base bag to get him. Count even at a ball and a strike, as is the score here in the bottom of the fourth. A 1 1 pitch, breaking ball is ripped again. This one farther foul. It's pulled out of play by Scott. So Scott's first appearance with the bases loaded this last. season. Scott this past year at 251 with 11 homers and 31 driven in the University of Washington. He's driven in four here in the NECBL. Bases full. A 1-2 pitch is low for ball two. 
Joey Bergman at third, Derek Jones at second, Aaron Westlake and first. Double single walk to load the bags with nobody out. The Blue Sox again willing to trade that run for two outs to the infield at double play depth. The corners are in. 2-2 two -two pitch is high and outside, ball three. Jennings works himself deeper into this one. Go get him, kid. Come on, Doug. Doug, who allowed five runs in the loss to the North Shore Navigators, his last outing. He's allowed one so far here tonight. He sets the payoff pitch, is grounded towards third in, past the dive of Jake Rosenbeck. In the score is Bergman. Jones rounding right behind him. He'll be safe. The throw is cut off. It's a two-run single for Troy Scott. And the goals grab a three-to-one lead. RBI number five and six for Troy Scott. And the Newport goals have struggled this season with runners in scoring position. Starting to show some more promise here in these last couple of games. Despite the loss last night, getting three runs home in Vermont on a Sunday night. Really are going after the Mountaineers pitching in here tonight. The Newport Gulls still with no one out here in the fourth inning. Now have their fifth consecutive man to a bat here. The first four have all reached. So Coach Daryl Moorhart out to have a conversation with Jennings and Zach Wright. Saw Matt Compton head down to the bullpen as well as the other catcher for the Blue Sox, Steve Rodriguez. So. Depending on who it is down there, we'll let you know as soon as we do. You can take another look at that ball hit by Scott, just battling off a pitch. It was a fastball outside, didn't try to do right too much fielder. with it. Just hit it where it was pitched, put it through the Mike left side. Kaminsky. And this inning is nowhere near over. Two on, nobody out. Mike Kaminsky steps in. He singled his first time up. Moved to second on a pass ball and was picked off 2-6-5 in the third inning. He shows bunt, he gets it down, it's back towards the mound. Jennings only play will be to first, he makes it. But a well executed sacrifice bunt by Mike Kaminsky and now runners at second and third and one down for Joey Manning. Is that one to four in the second bunt? Looked like the second Mason Rocky came into cover. Sean Rocky indeed over there to cover the bag as Nemeth and Rosenbeck both charged on the play. Center the wheel play being employed there Number by the Blue Sox. Joey Manning. Well executed by Kaminsky, so it's Joey Manning here with a big at bat. Chance to really break this one open. It's three to one goals here in the bottom of the fourth inning. A base hit from Manning can make it 5-1. Outfield shading Manning the other way, infield back. First pitch is in for a strike. I right, listen to the crowd with that Joey chant. He's very quickly become a fan favorite here in his second season. New four fans tend to endear themselves to their returning ball players. The 0 1 from Jennings is pulled foul. He dribbles behind home plate. Remember, Adam Tempesto is a guy who came, was a temporary guy in 06, came back. Uh, with the Pittsfield Dukes in 07. I remember he got a standing ovation. Yes, he did. When he was announced for his first time coming back to Cardin. So they don't forget you. But now the count 0-2 to Manning. The infield now in for the Blue Sox. Jennings pitch. Breaking ball is drilled out towards center field. Cooper Blank back towards the wall looking up. It's three quarters of the way off the wall. Manning goes in the second. Westlake in to score. Scott right behind him. It's five to one goals. A massive wall ball double for Joey Manning. He rocketed that one off the wall. Hit so hard at Cameron about 20 feet back and rolled further away from Blank. Delayed his time in getting to it, allowing two runs across the plate. And the goals have started to break it open here in the fourth inning. Four runs across so far. Joey four. Manning picks up RBI Short three and four of the season, his second double. Number four three. runs on four Eight hits and a walk. Ten the only four. out in the inning, the sacrifice bunt by Mike Kaminsky. Now David Bentroth, the shortstop, will stand in as the Holyoke pen continues to loosen. Manning leads from second. Pitch to Bentroth's inside for ball one and a real key to that pitch to Manning. It was an 0-2 pitch. A huge mistake made by Jennings with that fastball. Right down the heart of the plate and Manning knew exactly what to deal with it. 
The 1-0 to Bentron is on the outside edge for a strike to even the count. Imagine how, imagine how hard it caromed off that wall. It's really hit on a line. That ball would go in many ballparks in this league. Very few other parks have a wall as high as center field, center field fence here. Cardin's field center field fence here. Say that 10 times fast. This one is blue foul up the first baseline. There might be room for Nemeth, and he'll make the grab. Manning bluffs a tag at second, but will retreat. So the pop foul to the first baseman, Nemeth, is good for out number two. And Daryl Moorhart's going to pay a visit, and that's going to be all for Doug Jennings. Second visit of the inning. He'll have to ask for the baseball. Make a pitching change. So we'll step away for a moment as the new hurler comes in for the Blue Sox. It's five to one goals, and you're listening to the NECBL Broadcast Network. We're back at Cardine's Field. The new man on the hill is the lone southpaw in the Blue Sox bullpen, Mitchell Beacom. The sophomore from UCLA and San Diego, California, stands at 6'8 and 240. This is just the second appearance of the year for Big Mitch. He went an inning and a third, gave up a hit, no runs, a pair of walks, and a strikeout. He faced four men, allowed the one hit, a zero ERA. Was used sparingly out of the UCLA pen this past year through nine innings, did have a save, an ERA of six, even in eight appearances. 15 hits, nine runs, six earned, four walks to 14 strikeouts. He'd give up a pair of home runs, and opponents hit 375 against him. But it's a nice time to bring in a large sidewinding lefty with six straight lefties in the lineup drawn up by Mike Coons tonight. It'll be Greg Garcia the first to face him with Manning at second and two downs. Mike Melillo, the switch hitting catcher to follow. Beacom, the lanky lefty, replaces Doug Jennings after his shortest outing of the year. Three and two thirds, six hits, a pair of walks, two strikeouts. He's given up five runs. He's responsible for Manning at second base. It'll be up to Mitch Beacom for a while. Here would be my guest. The Blue Sox got a couple of nice outings yesterday. Only had to use two pitchers in the 11-5 win over the Manchester Silkworms. Five innings from Taylor Wood, then four. A beautiful relief from Jonathan Stevens. Stevens in those four innings gave up just one hit. He struck out four. Excuse me, he struck out five, picking up his first save of the season. Will be in to put out the fire here. Four across already for the goals. And Greg Garcia digging in. First pitch to him is bunted down the third baseline, plays perfectly. No play for Jake Rosenbeck, and how do you take that long, lucky delivery out of play? Make him try and field the ball. Very heady play from Garcia. Manning advances to third, and Melillo will be the ninth batter of the inning for the Gulls. Well, the Gulls have batted around for the first time this season. The catcher, number 10. So Melillo, who ended last Melillo. inning's threat, he left Garcia at second base as he hit one right on the screws, but right at the center fielder, Cooper Blank for out number three of that frame. Melillo will spin around and bat from the right side now after going 0 for 2 against Doug Jennings. Beacom, his long sidearm delivery is in there for a strike. Nice way to take a guy out of his rhythm. I really like that move by Greg Garcia. Rosenbeck. Why is he just hoping that ball would go foul? Had no plays. He was playing deep. The breaking ball is a touch inside. Beacom wanted that one. And it's one and one. I guess he has been a solid bunter for the Newport Goals this season. Whether bunting for a hit or bunting for a sacrifice. Beacom gets his sign from right and the pitch. Off speed. Misses outside with it. It's two and one. A lot of arms and legs coming at you with the six foot eight southpaw out there on the hill. It's a high leg kick and a deliberate motion to the plate, and the ball kind of jumps on you when it finally leaves his hand. He's ready. The pitch is a breaking ball that is dropped by Zach Wright. A pass ball will allow the runner to move to second, and Greg Garcia. A pitch that hit right in the mid. He could not squeeze it. That's his second tonight and fifth of the year. So now two in scoring position for Melillo, an all-star last season for these goals. 
it's Gar Garcia at second, Manning at third. The pitch is in there for a strike to load the count full. Melillo took one step out of the box, thought it might have been outside, it was not. And the count now loads full. Joey Bergman, who led this inning off with a double, would like to get another shot here, this time against Beacom. The payoff pitch is swung on him, miss. So Mitch Beacom gets the job done. He puts out the fire, gets out number three. But the damage has been done as the goal strike for four in the fourth. They enjoy a five to one lead. You're listening to NECBL Baseball on NECBL's broadcast network. We head to the fifth here in Newport, Rhode Island. Dan Sturdivant alongside Nick Lima at beautiful Cardines Field where the goals. And Andrew Kittredge now enjoy a five to one lead. They're able to put five on the board. One in the third, four in the fourth. All five charged to Doug Jennings, they're all earned. His night is done, Mitch Beacom came in to put out the fire, did a good job of that. And for giving up the bunt single to Greg Garcia with a strikeout, Mike Melillo to leave runners at second and third. Six, seven, eight, to up for the Blue Sox. Rob Lawler, the first, takes a big hack and comes up empty on a fastball. It's 0-1. Lawler grounded into the 6-4-3 double play that played the lone Holyoke run back in the second. Swings and lines this one out towards right field, playable for Kaminsky. And he'll make the grab for out number one. Rob Lawler continues to hit the baseball hard, but continues to have the tough luck of hitting it right at people. Probably had the worst luck of any Blue Sox hitter in that respect, of making good contact and getting no breaks from it. He mentioned the two big hits last weekend on the 19th and 20th and back-to-back -back nights. On the 19th, the walk-off game-winning hit. As Zach Wright digs in, excuse me, Cooper Blank digs in and cuts through a fastball. And the following night, a big two-run single in the middle of a five-run eighth inning rally for Holyoke as they were able to come back and beat the North Adams Steeplecats. The 0-1 to Blank is bounced in the lefty's batter's box. A ball and a strike to the Utah center fielder struck out looking back in the second. The breaking ball from Kittredge and buckled his knees and he had no complaint about it. The wind in the 1-1 one, one is outside, 2-1. and one. Blue Sox wearing those popular road blue jerseys with red Blue Sox, letters, white trim, number on the front. Also white on the sleeve inside. The 2-1 pitch is hit hard, but well foul. The right field line by Blank, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Zach Wright, the catcher to follow. Other action around the league tonight. Manchester is host that North Adams. No score, they go to the last of the second there. New Bedford and Keene, they go to the top of the third, no score as well. This one is in the dirt for ball three. Blank thought about it, but was easily able to check his swing there. No need for an appeal down to Richard Antonio. Pittsfield at Sanford rained out tonight. Still waiting on a score update from Vermont, playing at North Shore. You heard a live update here at Cardinals Field just a few moments ago. And the payoff pitch is hit hard towards right. But once again, playable for Kaminsky. He settles under and makes the grab. So a couple of fly balls out, and Mike Kaminsky's been busy here in the fifth. Zach Wright, the East Carolina University Pirate, will dig in now another right-handed bat at the bottom of this Blue Sox order. Grounded out to third Zach in the third. Wright. He comes into the ball game at 2.17. Only has five hits, but three have been for extra bases. A pair of doubles and a triple. And an RBI. Takes a breaking ball upstairs for ball one. And last night's ball game came off the bench. Ground into a double play that scored a run. So he takes a breaking ball for strike one there. It's one and one to him. Then his second at bat line, a triple out to center field at Northwest Park. He also came in to score in a sack fly by Cooper Blank. The 1-1 one, one pitch to him is low for a ball, two and one. Michael Beltran would bat if Wright can extend the frame as the Blue Sox trail the goals five to one here at Cardines. Big swing and a miss. 
and it's two and two. The Blue Sox swept the season series from the goals a year ago. Goals trying to even the score here. The pitch is popped up on the right side. Troy Scott will give it a look. He makes the call and the catch is a quick one, two, three, fifth for Kentridge. We head to the bottom of the fifth. It's 5-1 goals and you're listening to the NECBL Broadcast Network. Mitch Beacom on for his first full inning of relief after he came on and was able to strike out Mike Melillo to end the fourth. He'll like deal with the trio that got the trouble started for Doug Jennings an inning ago. Joey Bergman, Derek Jones, and Aaron Westlake who went double single walk. Then it was Troy Scott's two run single that got the party started after a sacrifice one to four by Mike Kaminsky. Joey Manning delivered a wall ball double that played it two more. Is able to extend the goals lead to five to one. The Blue Sox have shown that they can come back in ball games, but it's going to be up to Mitch Beacom to keep this lead at four. First pitch is high for a ball to Bergman. Beacom a hard throwing lefty. A long, lanky frame, six eight and two forty. He and Jonathan Stevens both stand at six foot eight in that Holyoke pen. The one zero pitch is swung on in. Missed as it's right into the mitt of Zach Wright. One and one. Berkman doubled last inning in scoring. Also grounded out to second. Beacom's ready. The pitch is cut on and missed once again. Good movement there on the two seam fastball. Was four seam, two seam. Curveball and a change. You won't see the change up as often as you'll see the breaking ball from Beacom as he goes to his secondary pitch. Lefty digs into the mitt. The one two is cut on and missed. Back to back K's there for Mitch Beacom. He got Melillo to end the fourth and now is able to sit down Bergman to start the fifth. The left fielder, number 19, Derek Jones. So Derek Jones will dig in now. Jones is singled and grounded out. His score to run. This one is foul tipped off of the gear of Zach Wright. It's 0 and 1. Jones making his first start and second appearance for the goals. Hitting at 333, 1 for 3. Breaking ball is in there for a strike. A good shot there from Beacom. Good bite on that pitch, and it's quickly 0 and 2 to Jones. Outfield shading him the other way. Towards the left center is blank. The 0-2 is a touch low, a good spot there on 0-2. And, and the biggest mistake that Doug Jennings made in this ball game was an 0-2 fastball. He left it with the heart of the plate to Joey Manning, who put it off the wall. This one is popped foul and out of play. One and two to the goal's left fielder. The freshman from Washington State. Better call, last. He's one of five left-handed batters in the order for the goals tonight with three righties and a switch hitter in the form of Mike Melillo. The one-two is again fought off towards the left side. Jones refusing to go quietly here to Beacom. Blue Sox who came into this ball game seven and five, a full game back of the Keen Swamp Bats. One two pitch is hit in the air down the left field line. Jim Wood will give it a look as it heads toward the community bullpen and out of play. An interdivision play in North Better Adams as the Steeplecats host the Silkworms. They go to the last of the third. North Adams two, Manchester nothing. The battle between Beacom and Jones continues. Three straight foul balls here for. The Southpaw Jones and the one two again fouled off. Four straight now. The next pitch you'll see in this at bat will be the eighth. So making Beacom work here is Derek Jones. Rella's popping up all over the stands here now. 
The rain starting to come a bit steadier. Still mostly a mist. The one-two is swung out and missed. So Beacom wins that battle. He struck out three in a row. Beacom, a guy, as I mentioned, used quite sparingly in that UCLA Bruins bullpen. One of a number of arms down there, and he's one of three Bruins here on the Blue Sox. Starting pitcher Chase Brewer and catcher Steve Rodriguez also made the journey cross country here for the summer. Aaron Westlake, the DH, digs in. First pitch to him is a breaking ball, and that's low. It's 1-0. Well, the radar remains completely clear, so no chance of any heavy rain that would delay the ball game. Westlake is 0 for 1 in the ball game, walked and scored last inning. Takes a breaking ball in there for a strike. He didn't like the call, but it's a strike all the same. Troy Scott would bet next if Westlake can extend the frame. Beacom's 1-1 pitch is a touch low, and it's 2-1. and one. Mentioned Westlink, the Vanderbilt Commodore. College teammate of Blue Sox outfielder Alex Hilliard, who's tending to an ankle injury tonight. The 2-1 pitch is on the outside corner, strike two. Good spot there from Beacom. He's a strike away from Kang the side in order here in the fifth. Really quieted down this crowd after the Coles had them on their feet last inning, putting four runs across. Newport enjoying a 5-1 lead. The 2-2 pitch is blooped out towards second, and it's caught on the fly by Sean Rocky. It's a 1-2-3 frame for Mitch Beacom and the Blue Sox. Score remains 5-1 Newport. We head to the sixth, and you're listening to the NECBL Broadcast Network. Michael Beltre is set to lead things off for the Blue Sox. First pitch to him is in there for a strike one is Andrew Kittredge, his retired five straight. The 0-1 is outside. He's also retired 11 of the last 12 Blue Sox he's faced. The only blemish in that string, the one-out single for Sean Rocky. This one is grounded softly towards short. It'll be fielded by Ben Trott. Throw to first is in time. And Beltran's retired by his counterpart, 6-3. So the rowdy crowd continues to help Mr. Beltran back to the dugout. One up and one down quickly. It's now six straight retired and 12 of 13 for Kittredge. Look a little bit shaken in that second inning after back-to-back -back hits. Leadoff man Stefan Arcure takes a off-speed pitch upstairs. But he got a double play ball that played the lone Blue Sox run and then struck out Cooper Blake to end that frame. This one's lined foul by Arcure and it's one and one. Mentioned Stefan's 0 for 3 last night at Manchester. Ending a four-game hit streak for him. Didn't have a pair of walks and scored a run. The 11-5 win for the Blue Sox. Hits this one hard, but right at Bentra takes a funny hop. He feels it. A nice play there by David Bentra. As that ball shot to his glove hand side at the last second, he stayed right with it, then fired a strike across to Scott for out number two. A lot of depth the Gulls had this season in the middle infield position. With Tim Smalling, the normal starting short stop. David Bentrott in there tonight. Again, great play on that, as you said, Dan, a very awkward second hop to him. The left ball was hit hard, but it looked like it was going to be right at him. Like you said, last second. It hopped out. Tried to avoid him, but he made a nice play to retire Ark here. And Jim Wood will dig in now. Wood comes in hitting at 378, takes a breaking ball for a strike. Jimmy's 0 for 2 tonight. Pair of ground outs. The 0 1 is foul tipped into the mitt of Melillo. And it's quickly 0 and 2. Jim on a three game hit streak. He's six of his last 10. A double RBI, and three runs, and five walks in the string. The 0 2 is wasted high and outside. A ball and two strikes to the Holyoke left fielder. Kittredge works quickly. This one is hit hard, but foul. 
His third base coach Dan Brooks has to dance out of the way of that one. Wood stays alive. So we'll do the one-two again. Sean Rocky would love a shot here. The one-two is in the dirt. Wood had to pick up his back foot to get it out of the way of that one. The count now evens at two balls and two strikes. Holyoke looking to draw closer to the Keene Swamp Bats who are at home against the New Bedford Bay Sox tonight. Pitch is swung and lined into center field, the base hit. As Jim Wood kind of serves that one back through the middle. Did a good job of keeping the weight back as an off-speed offering. Hit it back where it came from. And a string of seven straight retired stops with Jim Wood and his two out the single. Only the fourth base runner Number allowed 12, tonight by Andrew Kittredge. All four of them Rocky. reaching on singles. First two came back to back in the second, Nemeth and Rosenbeck. That led to the lone Holyoke run. The other hit was from this man, Sean Rocky, who singled in the fourth. He's also struck out, hits this one hard, through the hole into right field for a base hit. Wood will stop at second as Kaminsky fires it back into the infield. So the Blue Sox trying to get something going here with the power bats in their order coming up. Two on and two out. Let's see if we can get a look in the Newport Gulls bullpen here in the sixth inning, a four-run lead. Let's see if Newport will get anyone warming up now. The tying run coming to the on-deck circle. Kittredge already the pitcher of record. As he was, works Nemeth. with two down here in the sixth, and Mike Nemeth will dig in. Nemeth a single and a strikeout in this one. Single is a line shot into shallow left center over the head of the shortstop, David Bentra. Nemeth scored the lone Holy Oak run as Wood is second, Rocky at first. First pitch to him is a high changeup for a strike. Well, the Gulls bullpen remains dormant. The Blue Sox do have Matt Compton warming. Compton, the hard throwing righty from Burlington County College. Mitch Beacom has been good for his inning in a third thus far tonight. And now Newport will get a right hander on their feet. Looks like. I'll well, get a number for you, folks. Count a ball in a strike to Nemeth. Long set and the pitch is over ball. Snap to the first, it is not in time. Oh, that and was close. An excellent shot there by Mike Melillo. Stepping behind the left-handed batter to fire that one down to first base and check on Rocky. Took a head first dive to avoid the tag there of Troy Scott. So he stays alive as do the Blue Sox here in the six. Two balls and a strike. With two down here to Nemeth, Kittredge's pitch is fouled off as Nemeth lead on the fastball and it's two and two. The Blue Sox have had a couple of comebacks this season. They trailed the Danbury Westerners four to one, came back with five runs in the eighth to win that one six to four. As the chance of strike him out, rise up again here at Cardines Field. The pitch is swung on and spoiled by Nemeth. We'll do the 2-2 two -two once again. It is Brad Mincy warming up in the bullpen for Newport. It would be Mincy's first appearance if we were to enter this ball game at some point here tonight. As you can hear the Irish fans leading the crowd down that third baseline. The famous Irish fans back for their third season here in Newport from Dublin, Ireland. They're all soccer fans who come here and enjoy baseball games standing the entire time. The 2-2 two -two swung on and missed. So Kittredge is able to fool Mike Nemeth. Struck him out, that is K number six. The Blue Sox strand two. We head to the bottom of the six. It is five to one Newport. You're listening Ladies to the NECBL Broadcast Network. As we head to the bottom of the sixth inning, Newport enjoying a five to one lead. Dan Sturdivan alongside Nick Just Lee. Just a bit outside. And on the hill now for the Blue Sox will be Matt Compton, the hard throwing righty from Burlington County College. Making that his you? Team High sixth appearance is 0-1 with a 0.00 ERA. Has a save in seven innings pitched, three hits, four runs, none of them earned. As the Blue Sox lead the NECBL with 21 unearned runs surrendered this season. He's walked two and struck out three opponents hitting 107 against Matt Compton. 
Only the third pitcher of the night that Newport Gulls batters have seen. I think uh, someone found our effects mic a few moments ago. Good Bob Euchre impersonation there. Compton's last work came back on the 20th of June. He went two and two thirds against the North Adams Steeple Cats. He followed Mitch Beacom in that game after Beacom went an inning in the third. So Compton will do the same here tonight. As Beacom goes an inning in the third, gave up a hit, no runs, no walks. He struck out three. They all came in a row. So he got Melillo to end the, the fourth, the and then he got Burton the and base. Jones to start Number off the fifth. Got the little flare from Westlake to Rocky that retired the side in order. The third one, two, three inning by Blue Sox pitching today. Or it's the two innings in between that have spelled the trouble. First pitch is a fastball low to Troy Scott. He had the first big hit of this ball game. He broke a tie score with a two run single with the bases loaded in the fourth inning. He then came around to score the fifth run of the ball game on the two run double by Joey Manning that followed the sack bunt from Mike Kaminsky. Blue Sox got their lone run in the second. The goals one in the third, four in the fourth. This one is swung in and ripped towards second base, caught by Sean Rocky. A break for the Blue Sox there as Scott really hit that one on the screws. The right Bring fielder. up Mike Kaminsky, the right fielder, Number who was nine. one for one Mike tonight. Kaminsky. Singled up the middle, moved to second on a pass ball, and was picked off. 2-6-5 for out number one of the third inning. Then had a sack bunt in the fourth. That moved Aaron Westlake to third and Troy Scott to second. The first pitch to him is cut on and missed for strike one. Joey Manning promptly followed with a line drive three quarters of the way up the wall in right center field. Plating both Westlake and Scott with the fourth and fifth runs of the game. Another swing and a miss as Compton is humming it in there right now. Four seamer, two seamer, slider and a change. Two seamers is best pitch. It's how he likes to establish with hitters is bust him inside. He's up 0-2 to Kaminsky, the pitch. A touch outside and it's one and two. Right set up well outside that time. Try to see how far they can extend that outside corner from Vincent Sibeli. A one, two breaking ball travels about 57 feet. Makes its way to the screen. So two and two of the count now evens to the Newport right fielder Kaminsky. A lot of hitting room in center field here with Link shaded well over into right center. Compton shakes off one pitch. Now he's ready. The 2 2 is high and tight, and it hit him. He plunks Mike Kaminsky on the shoulder. So he lost him. He was up 0 2. Throws a couple of balls low in the zone. And then hits him on that front shoulder. So Kaminsky's had a scrappy little ball game. A single, a sack bunt, now a hit Joey by a pitch. Manning. And Joey Manning, who's been a thorn in the side of Blue Sox pitching all day, will dig in now. now that's the second time that Kaminsky has been hit by a pitch this season. It's the second batter that Compton has hit. So Compton will work from the stretch for the first time in this one. He's dealing with Joey Manning who is one for one, takes a fastball high in the zone for strike one. He walked, stole second base on that pickoff play, scored a run on the two out single from Greg Garcia, and had that big blow in the fourth inning, the one out, two run doubles, a check to first base on Kaminsky is not nearly in time. Trying to give these rowdy Newport fans something else to cheer about here in this ball game. It's five to one Newport. And Manning swings and misses at that offering and he's now quickly down 0 and two. And Zach Wright's gonna jog out and have a quick conversation with Matt Compton about how he'd like to try and put him away. I like the move by Wright after they lost Kaminsky had him 0-2. Refused to give in to him and then ended up hitting him on the 2-2 pitch. So Wright wants to go out and remedy the situation beforehand. The nine man David Bentron waits on deck. Infield that double play depth. Nemeth holds the runner, Kaminsky on it first. Rosenbeck behind the bag at third. The 0-2 is low and outside, one and two. The 
ball Manning hit off of Doug Jennings in the fourth was an 0-2 fastball that Jennings left up and over the plate and Manning drilled one to the right center field gap. This one is high and out of the zone. Compton reached back, got a little extra on it. It wasn't close to the strike zone. They tried to run it up the ladder there to Manning, ran it too high. And the count now two and two once again. So Compton bring the ill. That was outside to load the count full at three and two after being up 0-2. Has now worked the count full to Manny, who continues to have solid at bats here against the Blue Sox. Manning came in hitting right at 200. Six hits and 30 tries. Time is called at home plate, right one at time. Like he had something in his eye. He's still wiping his eye as he settles in behind the dish once again. Five one goals, bottom of the sixth. A one out base runner is Mike Kaminsky at first. The payoff pitch to Manning is swung and grounded out towards third. Rosenbeck fields his only play will be to first. He makes it as the runner Kaminsky was off with the pitch. So they keep themselves out of a double play as Manning is retired five to three for out number two. Runner in scoring position and two down for David Bentrott, the shortstop. The shortstop. And now manager Daryl Moorehart will head on out to the mound along with trainer Ali Steingeiser. We're gonna check out Matt Compton. Not sure what happened on that pitch, but Moorehart was quick to get out there. He saw something immediately that he did not like. They bring home plate umpire Vincent Zabelli out with him. They inspect him. Compton walks around the mound. And he's gonna stay in this ball game. Just a brief conversation. Not sure if he slipped or what may have happened out there. They didn't check his arm or anything. So Compton appears to be all right as he'll remain in the game with two outs and Kaminsky moving up to second on the ground out for David Bentron, who is 0 for 2 in the ball game. He has Number struck one, out and popped foul. David Bentron. Another runner in scoring position. The goals have thrived in this scenario in the ball game. First pitch to him is upstairs for a ball. Try and get a report on what happened to Compton out there. As soon as we find out, you folks will know as well. The 1 0 is in there for a strike at the top of the strike zone, and it's 1 and 1. A ball and a strike. The pitch to Bentron is lined out towards right field. That's going to fall in for a base hit. Being waved around third. The throw to the plate is... Not in time! Wright never tagged him! Zach Wright was waiting for him with the baseball and never applied a tag. So Stefan Ark, your strong throw to the plate, goes unused. And it's a two-out RBI single for David Bentrock. Oh, the throw was perfect. It was right on target. He just didn't have a tag. David Bentrock picks up his first RBI of the season and his first Number hit of the five. night. As you Greg see the replay, Garcia. it's a blooper down that right field line. And the throw right on target. Wright catches it. It looks like he just forgot to swing a tag down. Unbelievable. It's now six to one goals. The top of the order up in Greg Garcia. First pitch to him is high for a ball. It's one and oh. Garcia is two for three in the ball game. And Matt Compton just got a report that it is the ankle that's bothering him and that's why they paid a visit to him. Compton left the ball game earlier this season after rolling the ankle. He works through it here. He's given up a two out RBI knock to David Bentry. He's down on the count one and oh to Greg Garcia. He throws to first, not in time to get the Newport shortstop. Another run across here for the goals in the six. This one is pop foul. Rosenbeck gives it a look, but it's out of play in the count evens at one and one. Better call Newport. So Newport back. getting their sixth run of the ball game. Team that has struggled offensively this season, but has been dominant on the mound. 
Came in hitting at just 208 as a team. The pitch is fouled off. The top pitching team, the NECBL, an ERA of 197 coming in. With just the 10th ranked hitting attack with that 208 average. They've also struggled as a team with runners in scoring position. Not the case tonight as they've put six across against the Blue Sox. And this one's hit in the air to left field. Should be playable for Jim Wood, who now comes in a couple steps and makes the grab that retires the side. But another run across for the goals. Another piece of insurance for Andrew Kittredge. We head to the seventh. It's six to one goals. They're listening to the NECBL Broadcast Network. Welcome back to Cardine's Field. Andrew Kittredge's night is done, as is mine on the play-by-play. -play. Pass it back to the voice of the new four goals, Nick Lima, for the final three. Thank you very much, Dan Sturvet, making his new four goals debut here at Cardine's Field. Not just Andrew Kittredge. Welcome to the game back, Brad Mincy. Brad Mincy will be the new pitcher for the new four goals entering the game here. You can see the righty from East Carolina, a sophomore from Wilmington, North Carolina. The righty is six feet tall and weighs 185. This past year at ECU, Mincy was 10 and five with a 3.16 ERA, made 25 appearances, 10 starts, did have a complete game through 82 and two thirds innings. He had 89 hits, 43 runs, 29 of which were earned. He walked 22 and struck out 71. Opponents hit 266 against. And see where is number three. Stands in here. And we'll face numbers five, six, and seven in the Blue Sox lineup. Jake Rosenbeck, Rob Lawler, and Cooper Blank. So Mincy, the last Newport goal in uniform, or has not made an appearance this season, makes his first here. Goal still waiting for the arrival of Will Roberts, expected in a day or two. Round up their roster at 27. They're gonna leave that last roster spot open in case someone is needed. And Newport starts to make a playoff run in July. They could pick someone up before the Leading deadline for postseason eligibility. Which I believe it's July 15th. 15, 15, I'm season. not sure on that. We'll find Eight. out later. Run Jake the Rosenbeck, the former Pittsfield Duke, steps up here, one for two, returning an infield single. Bounce into a fearless choice to end the fourth inning. So he'll be the first batter that Brad Mincy faces in his goals career. The pitch. Squares for a bunt. Takes it in the outside corner. Called strike. Mincy so new we don't have much of a scouting report on him yet. He places Andrew Kittredge here. Is very effective through six. In line for the win. The 0-1 pitch. Ground ball hit on three hops to the shortstop. A tough hop to belt to... Um, Benchrod, who fires the first in time for the innings first down. The Blue Sox have to be glad to see someone other than Andrew Kittredge out there who went six, scattered five hits, gave up one run, it was earned. He did not walk a batter and struck out six Blue Sox. So an excellent start to the NECBL career for Andrew Kittredge. Here's the designated hitter, Rob Lawler, the former Concord Quarry Dog in 2007, played for the team in the NECBL Northern Division. Lawler is 0 for 2. He flied to right and bounced into a 6 4 3 double play. First pitch to him is in there for a strike. Lawler came in batting 156. The average will be down a few points now. No one was four runs batted in. The pitch. Swung on and driven into right center field. Joey Manning giving chase, and he makes the catch on the run to his left for the inning second out. That's two consecutive outs from Rob Lawler on balls, and he's really stung out the other way in both. Nothing to show for it, a couple of flyouts in the scorecard. I'll bring Cooper Blank up with two outs on the bases empty. Elsewhere around the NECBL, North Adams is up 2-0 on Manchester in the Cooper bottom of the sixth. Blank. And the Vermont Mountaineers have grabbed a 4-0 lead on the North Shore Navigators in the third. Pitch, low. Ball one to Cooper, who's over two. He flies to right in the fifth inning and struck out looking to end the second. One of those six strikeout victims for Kittredge. Pitch, high towering ground uh, pop up actually, right around the plate. Fielding is the catcher, throws the first wide, and Mike Melillo would have had to make a fantastic play to get him there. And as that ball took a high hop, probably bouncing right off the plate. And on the second hop, Melillo mask off, 
made a, a, a diving grab for it, was able to reel it in, and then literally just spread out on the ground, threw down to first base, but wide. It'll be an infield single for Cooper Blank. Can't charge an error on Melillo the from catcher. throwing it wide there. He wouldn't have had him either Number way. It's an outstanding effort for Melillo, and a good effort for right. Blank running down that line, beating it out. Yeah, it's near impossible when the ball chops off the plate and then dies in the infield. If you can get it on that one big hop, you have a great chance to get him, but a good break there for Cooper and the Blue Sox as it carried far enough away from Melillo to field it cleanly. Two out, one on. Zach Wright, who's 0 for 2, bats here. First pitch, ground ball, bouncing to the shortstop. Up with it is Benchrot. Throws across the first. Too late. That'll be infield single for Zach Wright. It was a slow grounder to David Benchrod. He had a charge shot. He looked quickly at second base. He had no chance of getting Blank, who was off and running on the hit and run. Tried to throw out right at first. The throw was late by about a half a step. And two Number infield four, singles. I put two runners on at first and second for Michael Beltran. So the bottom of the lineup, which has been kept off the bases so far tonight, has now sent both Blank and Wright on base for Beltran, who's over to himself. A strikeout and a ground out the short. The pitch from Mincy. Fastball is high, taken for ball one. Beltran coming off his best performance of the season, going three for four last night, a double, an RBI, and a pair of runs scored. Comes in batting 269, driven in three now in the season. Bats with runners at first and second and two down the pitch. Popped up right side. Foul territory now out of play, shading out towards West Marlboro Street behind us. One and one the count on Beltran. The poor Gulls have a comfortable lead here in the seventh. Six to one Newport leads the Blue Sox who are trying to make it a little bit more uncomfortable. Runners at first and second, two down the pitch. Curve, ground ball up towards the middle. The shortstop has it, flips up the short way to second for the out that retires the side. A six to four fielder's choice ends the inning. Both infield singles are harmless, but through six and a half from Cardi Field, let's pick up Newport Gulls. Pump the tracks down through Don O'Hanley for the seventh inning stretch here at Cardi Field. Keep it here live. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the ground. Buy me some peanuts and crack your I don't care if I ever get back for it's truth. Who the Gulf team if they the win is a shame? For it's one, two, three strikes you're out. Seven inning stretch time at Cardi's Field. Newport goes a six to one lead over the Holyoke Blue Sox. We'll be back in a few moments here on the NECBL Broadcast Network. Mike Melillo, the only goal not to reach base tonight. Bats here in the seventh inning, a six to one Newport goal lead at Cardine's Field. I'm Nick Lima, joined by Dan Sturdivant here on the NECBL Broadcast Network. Melillo, Bergman, and Jones. Schedule three, two up for Number Newport 10, here in the seventh. Melillo. Melillo, 0 for three, appears strikeouts, fly to center. Waits the first pitch from Compton. It's up and away, ball one. Every other goal has reached base at least once tonight. Only other goal without a hit is Aaron Westlake who reached on a walk in the fourth inning. The pitch up and away. Count is two and nothing to Newport's all-star catcher from the 2008 season. NACBL first team selection. MVP of the All-Star game. Pitches up and away. Ball three. Milovo, one pitch away from Allowing all Newport, nine Newport goals in the starting lineup to reach base tonight. See if he gets a green light here. Taking all the way, it's a strike call in the outside corner. Three and one now. To Melillo, catcher out of Elon University. Compton from the windup. Here just count, three one pitches. Skied into foul territory at the first baseline. Nemeth calling for it, he'll make the catch or out number one. So Millillo remains the only goal kept off the base pass in this ball game. So 
He fouls out to Nemeth. Now bring up Joey Bergman. One for three. Double, the run scored. The Strike out and a ground out. Number four, Joey Bergman. Double was his second of the season. Coming back in the fourth, when Newport played it four runs to take the lead. Fellows added one in the sixth. Lead it six to one. The pitch up and away. Ball one. Newport scored for the first time in the third inning to not the score at one to one. To the Blue Sox got their lone run back in the second. This pitch is blooping to left center field and it's gonna drop in for a base hit. So Jerry Bergman is now two for four here at Cardane's Field tonight. Bergman, like who was one for three last night in Keene. Has a hot bat as of late. Looks like a little Garrett something off the fastball from Compton since when he first came in last inning. Really humming it in there, and now a little less on it, allowing Bergman to catch up to it and flare that one into left for a base knock. Oh, here's Derek Jones, and his first hit of his NACBL career in the fourth inning. It was a single, leader scored a run in the inning. Well, the four run rally by Newport. He's one for three. Swings in the first pitch, fouls it off towards America's Cup Avenue, and out of play. Jones bounced to short, single and struck out. For the Washington State Cougars, had a 223 this spring. Led the Cougars with 12 home runs. So knocked in 37, eight doubles and a triple. Extra base power in the bat of Jones. Swings, misses to the next pitch. Strike two. But he's now one for four, batting 250 here. In very limited playing time. Joined the team last night in Keene as a pinch hitter. Coming in to play the outfield. So goals have all their position players now. Only took to the last week of June to get them. The 0-2 pitch, low and away, ball one. Cole still missing one of two pitchers. Will Roberts scheduled to arrive soon. Newport went the first 10 days of the season with only nine position players as the pitch is swung on and missed, strike three. Derek Jones fans for the second time tonight. Now we'll see Aaron Westlake. Westlake. Jones Melillo being the only goal without a hit tonight, though he did reach base via a walk in the fourth inning. Number 29, Aaron. Pop to second, West fly Blake. to center. 0 for 2. This is our Tigers TV crew power inning. Goal batter hits a grand slam this inning. They'll receive a free DVD copy of the game. Courtesy of the Tigers TV crew, the pitch. Swung on and driven to deep center. Going back, blank, still going back, chasing it at the wall. He'll reach up and make the catch, running into the wall for out number three. Blank had to go a long way back to make that one to left center field, battling the fog, Ladies but brought it in. Westlake retired by way of a fly out to deep center. And we are through seven innings of play at Cardines Field. It's the Newport Gull six. The Polo Blue Sox won as we continue on the NECBL Broadcast Network. The winner is Alex. To the top of the eighth we go here at Cardane's Field. Newport goals a 6-1 lead over the Holyoke Blue Sox and Holyoke's only trip to Newport this season. Steven Acker to lead things off for the Blue Sox here. Now, over the offseason, when New Bedford made the switch from Torrington to New Bedford, become the Bay Sox, there's a lot of talk about how the divisions will be realigned as the pitch is swung on, fouled down the left field line and out of play. And a lot, a lot of people wondered if Holyoke would be included in the Eastern Division alignment, being a very right short ride from seven. Newport, Arcura. very short ride from Manchester, Number eight. not that far away from Lynn and Lowell as well. As Brad Mincy out for a second inning, second inning of relief. Waits the pitch to Stefan. Here it is. It's inside. He jackknifes out of the way. The count is one and one. And one. Or rather, two and one. A lot of people were surprised when Holyoke was put in the western alignment. Pitch is swung on. So it is like a borderline community, I suppose. It can go either way. Yeah, pretty much dead center in the NECBL as far as uh, long trips go. The longest ones are up to Vermont and up to Sanford, which are both around three and a half hour rides, but then you have a lot of short rides like down here to Newport and also to Western Mass. Two one pitch, curveballs in the side ball three. The goals have really benefited from the 
realignment of divisions. The count has worked full on Stefan. Payoff pitch, swung on and hooked down the left field line. He's going to trail into the bullpen. Now out of play. Looks like one of the pitchers down there tossed up his hat trying to make the, the famous hat in midair catch unsuccessfully. We'll see that once in a million years, especially from a pitcher. <laughs> the payoff pitch. Strike three called in the inside corner. Acker disagrees as he had Jackknife all the way on it, but did cross the inside part of the plate. His first strikeout for Brad Mitzi as a Newport goal. Now Jim Wood. Number 22. Jim One for three, two Wood. ground outs in a single. The goals have it much easier this year than they've had in the past on the road. Traveling up to Lowell and Lynn and New Bedford, all less than an hour and a half away. Some curveballs in there for a strike. Now up to Sikonet River Bridge in Tiverton. That connects Tiverton and Portsmouth wasn't out uh, for heavy travel, such as buses and trucks. These road trips would be even shorter. Pitches swung on and missed. Quickly counts nothing in two on Wood. That the, the weight restriction on the bridge prevents uh, Newport from, of course, from crossing it. Unless they take a couple smaller buses as the 0-2 pitch is high ball one, which of course would be more expensive having two drivers to hire. So the goals have to go a long way across the Mount Hope Bridge through Bristol, Rhode Island, and up 195 in Massachusetts. It's a 1-2 pitch, just misses inside the changeup. It's 2-2. Two and two. So if that bridge didn't have that weight restriction on it, it would take almost 45 minutes out of every trip from Sanford, Lowell, Lynn and New Bedford. And that's a lot of travel time, an hour and a half for each round trip to those ballparks, each of which they have to travel to three times. But even with the, the bridge re weight restrictions, the goal still have some pretty easy travel times. The pitch is a line drive in the left field. That's going to drop in for a base hit as Newport goal third baseman Joey Bergman is able to just get a little piece of it in his glove. The throw comes in the second, and it is not in time. It's going to be a double. For Jim Wood, how about that? A, a line drive double down the left field line as Derek Jones was late in getting to it. Jim Wood's two for four. The one out double here in the eighth. And Wood red hot as of late. He's now eight for his last 14 in this four game hit streak for him. 12, Another Sean score recently in from around Rocky. the league. New Benford leading the Keene Swamp Bats one to nothing in the top of the six. Up at Alumni Field in Keene. There's Sean Rocky with one out and one runner in scoring position. Wood stands in at second. A pitch from Brad Mincy. And the third goes to the backstop, taking it up for third and taking it successfully. Will be Wood without a throw. It's going to be charged as a wild pitch to Brad. Now, potential to run 90 feet away here. The goal is a five-run lead. Not much to worry about yet here. You never know. This Blue Sox offensive attack. The eighth inning has been the inning for the Blue Sox. They put five on the board that erased a 5-0 deficit against North Adams back on the 20th. And against Danbury, they erased a 4-1 deficit in the eighth inning. Curveball is in there for a strike. One and one on Rocky. Of course, Holyoke defeated Manchester in interdivision play last night, 11-5. Mincy from the stretch, a check on the runner at third, a 1-1. Another hook is inside the throw, almost goes in the outfield as Mike Melillo threw down the third base. Joey Bergman wasn't really set up to receive it. And then woke up at the last moment and brought it in. It was a good play because he's hiding himself behind Sean Rocky, so Wood couldn't see him. Only problem is Bergman couldn't either. Pitches swung on and miss for a strike. Count on even at two in two. Mike Nemeth waits on deck, the cleanup man. Third base occupied. Mincy from the stretch at the belt, the 2-2. Ground ball hit up the third base line. Backhand stab by the third base. And Bergman throws to first. And it was it a foul ball? Now it's likely to be an infield single. It will be a hit. Okay. Yeah, tough for our vantage point here. Uh, to see that ball, see if it was fair or foul. It was called fair. I think Jim Wood made the right play there. Uh, you don't want to give up that run. Your run means nothing at this point as you trail by five. So Coach Dan Brooks keeping him right there at third base, still with just one out. And now your two better power hitters coming to the dish. Blue Sox looking to rally here as Mike Nebeth stands up. He's one for three. Hits a ground ball. Come back into the mound. Reflex clap by Mincy. Throws to second for now on the first double play. A one 
4-3 double play ends the threat here in the eighth as the Blue Sox go down. It's actually a 1-6-3 double play that ends the that retires the side. The Blue Sox spin the runner. They've left the six and went through seven and a half from Cardine's Field. Newport calls leading the Blue Sox 6-1 here on the NECBL Broadcast Network. Back here down Cardenes Field, we go to the last of the eighth inning. Some barreled action up in the bullpen as both Holyoke and Newport have uh, thrillers throwing. Looks like Jeff Nichols warming up in the bullpen for Newport. For Holyoke, King McKenzie, right-hander warming. Both right-handed action in the bullpen. And a new pitcher on the mound here in the last of the eighth for the Blue Sox. Dan? It'll be the right-hander Nick Noblet, the junior from Franklin Pierce and Westfield, Mass. Nick is on for his third appearance of the year. His first two of both starts, he's 0-1 with a 9-8-2. Nick has struggled. He's only lasted three and two-thirds, given up four hits, five runs, four of which were earned. He's walked Your five and struck out three. Opponents only hitting 267 against. He has hit a batter and he's balked one time. So he's been his own worst enemy out there on the hill. He didn't pitch this last season as he had to sit out and, uh, after transferring from American International in Springfield to Franklin Pierce up in New Hampshire. So missed the whole season. He's still trying to get the sharpness and movement back to his pitches. Fastball, curveball change from the righty and now Game to work out of the bullpen, and as you mentioned, Mackenzie King warming behind him here in the Holyoke pen. So the Nick Noblet, the fourth pitcher Friday of the night, used by the Holyoke Blue Sox. Tune in tomorrow night as the season series continues. 6.30 first pitch, 6.15 will be on the pregame show in Holyoke, Massachusetts, Massachusetts as um, Dan and I and Alex will have the call on the NECBL Broadcast Network as they wrap up the season series. And into the division play between the Blue Sox and the Goals. That's tomorrow night at Holyoke. As we bring the action to you live from McKenzie Stadium. Tomorrow on the air at 6.15. The pregame show, first pitch at 6.30. So we hope you'll join us then. Troy Scott, Mike Kaminsky, join Manning. Lead things off for the Newport Goals. Here in the eighth, they have a 6-1 to one lead. As Scott, who's one for three, takes the first pitch. Fastball win there for a strike. Scott grounded out. Up to two RBI single in the fourth and line to second. Waits the 0-1. Curveball is swung on and hit into center field, charging in. Center field is going to drop in for a base hit. Blank plays it on a hop. The throw comes into the infield. Troy Scott is two for four. And the Newport Gulls have matched their season high in hits with 10. I think the Gulls reached that season high point. Right fielder. Probably in the first or second Number game nine, of the 2008 Mike season and quickly surpassed Kaminsky. it. Well, this season, the offense struggling. It's taken them until June 24th to get to that 10 hit mark in the ball game. Multiple times. Mike Kaminsky stands in. Blown away ball one. Their other 10 hit output came in the 4 to 1 win against the North Shore Navigators back on June 15th. Also here at Cardines. From the stretch, Noblet. Pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Counts even to Mike Kaminsky. And he's had a pretty interesting night. Single. It was picked off in the third inning. Sacrifice bunt advance runners in the fourth. It was hit by a pitch in the sixth. Some good defensive plays in right field tonight. The pitch. Fastball in the outside corner. Called strike. It's one and two. Jerry Manning to follow here. Troy Scott at first and no one out in the eighth. Five run advantage for Newport. From the stretch, Noblitz, one two pitch. In the dirt, off the glove of the catcher, hits the throw down a second and will be in plenty of time to get Troy Scott. Oh, good reflex that time from Zach Wright, who was able to knock it down on a pitch in the dirt and get a courtesy hop back into his glove, threw a bullet down to second base to retire Troy Scott. Well, sometimes you're better off being lucky than good, and right there, right. The only chance he had was to throw the mid out at that one, got a lucky bounce as it popped up in the air, able to snare it on the fly, then fire a strike down to Beltran at second. Pitch. Swung on, popped up, right side. Nemeth 
Does he have the room for the concession stand? It's off his glove. In and out of the glove of Nemeth. Opportunity there, missed by the Blue Sox. In fact, that Troy Scott being thrown out, he is the sixth runner that Zach Wright has thrown out trying to steal so far this season. He's allowed one stolen base tonight. That was the one when he picked off Kaminsky at second, but Manning wisely advancing to second on the play. Cat remains one and two on Mike Kaminsky. Jerry Manning waits on deck. The pitch. Curve is high and goes to the backstop. A bit of wildness from Noblet here. That fog is thickening in the outfield. It's just an official game now, and it's very doubtful that the fog will thicken too much here. We've had games fogged out here at Cardings Field in recent years, though so none yet this season. Fortunately, with all the rain we've had, it's kept the fog away. Count has worked full, three balls and two strikes. The payoff pitch to Kaminsky. Swung one, popped up to the right side. Beyond the grandstand and out of play. It'll land near the fire station across the street from Cardings Field. We are in scenic downtown Newport, though not so scenic so far this season with all the rain and clouds that have hampered the NECBL in the entire Northeast, really, this, this month. We're waiting for the weather to break tomorrow. It's supposed to be a beautiful weekend. And the payoff pitch, high ball four. Kaminsky picks up a one-out walk. So, runner at first base was erased on the pickoff, and very quickly, first base is occupied again, as Joey Manning will bat here. Manning, one for two, a walk. Uh, two RBI double in the fourth inning. Also rounded out. Uh, weather report for tomorrow looks much more favorable than the last few days. Temperatures in the 70s. Sunny skies, it's gonna improve for Friday. Temperatures in the 80s for the weekends. A lot of sunshine. Pitch, ground ball hit on a line to the third baseman, throws a second out there on a first double play. A 5-4-3 inning ending double play. Turned expertly by the Blue Sox infield. We are through eight innings of baseball here at Cardines Field. Newport goes six, Holyoke Blue Sox one. We go to the ninth, last chance for the Blue Sox next here on the NDCBL Broadcast Network. We go to Here's the ninth at Cardines Field. New pitcher for the Newport Gulls, as expected. Well, see Jeff Nichols making his third appearance of the season. It goes. Picked up a couple innings of relief in Vermont on Sunday night. Uh, the Newport Gulls victory over the Vermont Mountaineers. The Gulls came in, pitched the eighth inning. Around a single. Another batter reaching and ever retired. The other three batters he faced. Nichols comes in on the season for the Newport Gulls. An ERA of zero. No record in his two previous appearances of relief. He's worked one and two thirds innings overall. Wow, just that one hit. And he scored one strikeout. Opponents hitting 143 against him. His limited appearances thus far. One of many late additions to the Gulls roster. As Newport waited on players who were waiting themselves for the Major League Baseball first year player draft. Had to attend summer classes, who were working their way through injuries or a few other delays in getting into Newport. They always only had 14 players on opening night in Manchester. And that number did not grow very much throughout the first week of the season. It wasn't until week two when Newport got 16 here. Newport struggled at first, but still kept the wins on the board. Thanks in great part to the goals pitching. And that pitching has been here all night. Well, just one earned run in the ball game from Andrew Kitteridge, who's in line for the win. Not a safe situation here as Jeff Nichols comes out to work tonight. He'll face Rosenbeck, Waller, and Blink. Any of them reach Zach Wright, barring a pinch hitter. Jake Rosenbeck, former Pittsfield Duke, one for three now. Field single, field's choice, and a ground out to short. Takes the first pitch, a strike from the outside corner. It's nothing in one. Nichols, which is a fastball, curveball, changeup. Primarily working on the bullpen this season with Newport, from what we're told. The 0-1 is low. It counts even at 1-1. One one. These two teams meet again tomorrow night in Holyoke. Tune in on the NCBL Broadcast Network at 6.15. Pre-game show, first pitch at 6.30. Pitch Kobe Hawk for Newport. And Chase Brewers for 
Holyoke. The pitch is skied high and deep to right center field. Jeremy Manning in the right field of Mike Kaminsky. Trading over, it is Kaminsky who makes the catch in front of Manning for the innings first out. Kaminsky's been busy in right field tonight. Now Rob Lawler, 0 for 3. The designated hitter. Bounced into a double play, fly to right, fly to center. Rob Lawler. Lawler, that's here from the right side. As Nichols winds and delivers. Curveball in there for a strike. It's nothing in one. Jeff Nichols trying to close this one out. Pitch. Another curveball is outside. Counts even at one and one. Stay tuned after the game for our Newport Gulls post-game report. Dan and I will be back just a couple minutes after the final pitch with uh, stats, standings, Highlights and a whole lot more. Totals for the game, out of town score reports. And then thereafter, I'll be down on the field with our Newport Gulls player of the game interviews. 20 minute post game show coming up after every game here at Cardinals Field, the NECBL Broadcast Network. The pitch goes to the backstop and off the glove of Mike Melillo. Ball two. Well, most fans still have umbrellas out there. But not really needed all that much now. The rain has stayed away. Fans have still shown up here tonight despite the dismal weather. 2-1 pitch is in low for ball three. Three and one now on Mola. Official tens 811, 811. 811 fans here tonight. Still a school night in Newport, though some young young fans made the trip. The pitch is swung on and grounded up the third base line, but just foul. Oh, across the third base bag, but landed in foul territory. Town's worked full. Gulls trying to improve to five and one at home with the win here tonight. Would improve to eight and four overall. Would send the Blue Sox to a seven and six record. Payoff pitch. Strike three called right down the middle. Got him on the breaking ball. And there are two down. Blue Sox, last hope in Cooper Blank. He's one for three. Strike out, a fly out to right and an infield single. And Blank had that ball that chopped off a home plate. Eluded Mike Melillo. He's able to leg it out at first. The inning in which the Blue Sox stranded two. They've stranded six in the ball game. The pitch. Swung on, fouled to the right, and out of play. Nothing in one on Blank. Well, we're waiting on the final score. Out of that Vermont, Newport Labs. as the Mountaineers host the North Shore Navigators, a loss for North Shore here tonight could give the Newport Gulls their first division lead of the season. Pitches swung on, found to the max stop. The Gulls come in tonight only half a game behind North Shore in the NECBL East. Holyoke is one game back of the Western Division leading Keene Swamp Bats, who the Gulls helped attain that lead last night with Newport's loss to Keene 7-3. Blue Sox down to the last strike. The 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out, and this one's over. Back-to-back -back strikeouts to end the game for Jeff Nichols as the Newport Gulls defeat the Holyoke Blue Sox 6-1, the final score here at Cardinals Field. Newport does improve to 5-1 at home this season and 8-4 and overall the as the Holyoke Blue Sox drop to 7-6. A win goes to Andrew Kitteridge and the loss to Doug Jennings we as the Newport Gulls defeat the Holyoke right Blue Sox for the first time this season. And wait, game two coming up tomorrow in Holyoke. Don't go away, folks. As we mentioned, a full post-game report coming up next. Lots more still to come. Dan Sturdivant and I will be back in just a moment as the post-game report starts next on the NECBL Broadcast Network. Back here now at Cardines Field, totals in this one for the Newport Gulls. Six runs are on 10 hits, no errors, five left on base for the Holyoke Blue Sox. A run on nine hits, no errors committed, they left six. The win goes to Andrew Kinnerich, six innings, one run, it was earned. Allowing just five hits, no walks, fainting six. He picks up the win, improves to one and oh. Doug Jennings falls to two and two, three two, two thirds innings of work. Allowed five earned runs, six hits, two walks, three strikeouts, no save in this one as Jeff Nichols came out to finish up the ball game, striking out the last two batters, pitching in perfect ninth. The game 
took two hours and 20 minutes to play. It was watched by a crowd of 811 here at Cardines Field as the Newport Gulls defeat the Holyoke Blue Sox 6-1 to the final score. Dan? Well, for the Blue Sox, as you know, they'll be at home tomorrow night for the Newport Gulls. Then the following two nights as well as they'll close out their season series with the Manchester Silkworms on Friday night and then host the division-leading Keene Swamp Bats on Saturday as the race for the Western Division lead really starts to heat up here as any ABL season passes that one quarter away point. Newport goes improved to 1-0 against the Holyoke Blue Sox this season. One game remaining in the series. It is tomorrow, Thursday, June 25th at Holyoke at McKenzie Stadium. We'll be on the air the pregame show at 6.15, first pitch at 6.30. Pitch Kobe Hawk for the Newport Coles, 1-0, 1.26 ERA of the season against Chase Brewer, an ERA of 0, 1-0 on the season himself. Next home game will be on Friday, June 26th versus the Lowell All-Americans as the Gulls return to Eastern Division action. We'll be on the air on Friday night at 6.05 Eastern, first pitch at 6.35, so we hope you'll join us for that one. Newport Gulls win it 6-1, to the final score. Dan, we'll see you tomorrow. Sounds great. We'll see you, Nick. We'll be back in a moment as the Newport Gold's postgame report continues next with out-of-town scores on the NCBL Broadcast Network. And very quickly back here at Cardine's Field, some out-of-town score wrap-ups. Pittsfield at Sanford, rain out tonight. Another rain out for the Pittsfield American def Defenders. New Bedford at Keene, uh, they're tied one-to-one -one in the top of the seventh as New Bedford plays at Keene this evening. Manchester Silkworms play at the North Adams Steeplecats. At last check, 4-0 North Adams on top. They go to the top of the eighth in North Adams. And in Vermont, they go to the bottom of the fifth. Vermont leading North Shore, 4-0. So for the moment, the Newport Gulls have so possession, or could possibly have so possession of first place in the NECBL Eastern Division. And at the moment, they will be tied with the North Shore Navigators, unless the Navigators can come from behind to defeat uh, Vermont in Montpelier, where the Mountaineers have a 4-0 lead over North Shore. Newport just a half game back in the NECBL East. Those are out-of-town scores. Don't go away, folks. Stay tuned as our Newport Gold's Player of the Game interview is next here on the NECBL Broadcast Network. Welcome back here at Cardines Field as our Newport Gold's post-game report continues. Nick Lehman now joined by our Newport Gold's Player of the Game, Andrew Kittred. Andrew, congratulations on the victory tonight. Thank you. Uh, it's been uh Itching to get my first appearance here, so it's kind of good to get out there finally. So how is it to go out there and get a win at home in your Newport Gulls debut? Uh, it's always good to get a win, but uh, the bats came alive, and uh, I don't know, I just did what I could. I haven't thrown in since almost a month, so it was nice to finally get back out there. So you just joined this team, what, about a week ago? Uh, how have you been enjoying your stay so far here in the City by the Sea, and is this your first trip to the uh, uh, Newport area? Yes, yeah, my first trip. Uh, so far, I'm loving it. All the guys on the team are great, and... Uh, it's just a fun place to play. Newport Gulls bats really coming alive here tonight, matching a season high with 10 hits total. Uh, the Newport Gulls, we couldn't really pick an offensive player of the game as the offense came up and down the lineup. Uh, seven of the starting nine had hits in the ball game. Just an overall productive offensive night as the Gulls defeat the Holyoke Blue Sox 6-1, to one, backing up uh, some strong pitching by yourself and the bullpen as well. Yeah, you know, it's great. Uh, especially, it's always nice when you're a pitcher to get some offense behind you and Luckily, uh, I mean, they came out, the other team, and uh, scored early off me, but um, it was great going out there. Our team comes right back and gives me some confidence, and so it's nice pitching with the lead. Andrew, tomorrow, Colby Hawk gets a start for the Newport Gulls as they face Holyoke again on the road. Uh, does a pitcher do anything different to prepare for a game when you're on the road compared to at home? Um, I don't know. I think you always want to go out and be aggressive, pound the zone. I think, I think your approach is always the same. Uh, I think Colby's going to do that tomorrow. He's just going to go out and pound the zone. So um, I don't think he should have any problem. All right, Andrew, you're a Newport Gold's player of the game. Congratulations on the win. You're first in the Gold's uniform here tonight. And good luck in Holyoke tomorrow. Thank you very much. That's our player of the game interview with Andrew Kittredge. Don't go away, folks. We'll wrap things up next as the postgame report continues on the NECBL Broadcast Network. And back here one final time at Cardines Field in Newport, Rhode Island. The Newport Gulls defeat the Holyoke Blue Sox 6-1, to the final score behind the storm pitching of Andrew Kittredge as Newport improves to 8-4 and four on the regular season and for the moment has sole, play, sole possession of first place in the NECBL Eastern Division pending a game that is going on right now between Vermont and North Shore up in Montpelier. If uh, Vermont hangs on to win that game. The Newport Gulls will go to Holyoke tomorrow, leaders of the NCBL East for the first time this season. 
Newport Gulls take a 6-1 victory here tonight. Let's pause for a moment and thank those who made this broadcast possible. The executive producer of Newport Gulls Baseball and our director tonight is Tom Lima, our on-site engineer and dugout camera person Hayden James, our associate producer and dugout camera person Mike Violet, our statistician Nick Tasso. For Dan Sturdivant, I'm Nick Lima here at Cardines Field. The Newport Gulls defeat the Holyoke Blue Sox 6-1 here, the final score on the air at the pregame show tomorrow in Holyoke at 6-15, first pitch at 6-30. We'll hope you join us then. Our next home game will be here at Cardines Field versus the Lowell All-Americans on Friday night at 6.05 the pregame, first pitch at 6.35. For now, thank you all for watching. For all of us here, so long, everybody.